I uh, I apologize for, well, do I have to do something? Anyway, you guys can hear me anyway. Um, yeah, so thank you to Jennifer for moving me up. I've got to leave town real quick, so I can stick around like normal. Um, but as she mentioned in the agenda, we are uh, recommending that the Council for the District of Sickness in 2022 is the year of the garden. And what I'll just mention to you real quick, I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Um, I'm just going to read this out. The Canadian Garden Council, through its Year of the Garden 2022 initiative, aims to inspire and inform Canadians about the many health and well being, economic and environmental benefits gardens and gardening provide, and along the way, provide trips, tips, and tricks for gardening success with the enjoyment of gardens. Sickness, communities, and tools as it dovetails really well with our plans to add Sycamus as a destination garden community, which I had brought forward to you guys before on Canada's garden route. Um, with the support of the Sycamus Chamber and Sycamus Economic Development and Sarah's help, uh, we are taking advantage of opportunities to promote Sycamus as a garden community through other means as well, such as TOTA and the Visitor's Guide as well. So, Jen, I, I've got a couple more things I want to bring up. Uh, as far as the proclamation, I'm not sure how what the uh, protocol is for that. Sure, if council wishes to make uh, that motion now. Yeah, we will. And then, Are you finished your presentation? I've got just a couple more things I want to bring up. Go ahead, and then we'll read out the resolution. Want me to finish? Go ahead. Okay. So just uh, one of the other reasons I wanted to uh, be at the meeting today is, as you all know, April 30th is the community cleanup. And so this is the last council meeting before that. And so just a reminder to everybody and getting it out there that we have the t-shirts, thanks to Bader and the Legion is committed to making the lunch. And I am still putting things out on social media. I would appreciate the district continuing to do that too. I have no reason to believe that, or you know, every reason to believe that, you know, we'll get lots of people out again. Um, but it never hurts to keep getting that word out. Um, as per my previous update, we have lots of other stuff on the uh, coming in the coming year. But in immediately or a little sooner, Daryl and I have met about the Ukrainian internment camp and the caboose, and really excited about how both of those projects are going to look. Um, so other than that, I know you guys have a full agenda, so I don't want to, I, I want to limit my effort. Uh, if any of you with the things I brought up before for the plans for the year, if you've got any questions, I, you can always give me a shout. Otherwise, uh, I'll probably give you another update and get closer to judging and <coughs> until then. All right, Deb. Thanks. All right, the recommendation that Council for the District of Sycamore proclaim 2022 as the year of the garden. I need a mover on this. Councilor Aries, second by Councilor Bushel. Any comments on this? I'm gonna call the question, all those in favor? It's carried unanimously, thank you. Thanks, Deb. And uh, we're looking forward to this spring cleanup and uh, I'm sure that uh, Councilor Malmas and Councilor Bushel will be willing to help you out in every way they can. Absolutely. I, and I, I noticed Councilor Malmas is going like this. She's, yeah. So just one other comment, Councilor Airy has also said that we're going to try and work some recycling into it too. He's kind of spearheading that. So that with everything we're bringing in, where possible recycle too. Well, you know what? They've got great leadership, so they'll be buying in, I can guarantee it. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. Thank you. All right, administrative update, capital projects, Daryl, you've got the floor. Okay. I'm hoping this works this time. Okay, so I've got some updated slides from the last time we went through the projects. Some are older and updated and some are new. So it's a quick around the world on what we're doing. Uh, so the wastewater treatment plant, we've uh, got to a really good point with that construction now has been commissioned. Uh, I want to kind of just put a bow on that project. I'm going to go backwards really quickly here. We've talked about some of this stuff before uh, because it's going to be important. The 1135 cubic meters per day was the level that we've had since 1995. 
so that was a problem. Our daily volume was exceeding that number of times each year, more so as time went on. Uh, the chemistry within the discharge uh, was also a little bit problematic. People online can't see it, so I'm just sharing the screen. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so volume was the biggest component uh, in terms of what we could what we could take. Kind of okay, too far. No. Okay. So there's our volumes. Last year was a little bit of an anomaly with just the, the fires and uh, you know just less people in the town. But if we look at 2017 to 2020, you can see a trend upward each year, and that's our cubic meters per day. And those were taken out of the third quarter, which is our busiest quarter. So you know winters obviously are lower, we're around 600. This is the busy quarter, and you can see we've gone from eight. 903, 930, and then and then over a thousand. So we're definitely trending upward on our cubic meters per day. We need to raise that. The chemistry uh, of the effluent after we've treated it, uh, we need to have numbers under 30 for biological oxygen demand. It's it's a very small amount, it's a milligram per liter, uh, but we need to reach under 30 at all times. Our average was 43, and that as for the third quarter of 2020, the, the last <clears throat> normal year. So uh, TSS, total suspended solids, another measure that Ministry of Environment looks at carefully. Our average was 51 and we're only allowed 30. So we were exceeding it. There were, there were times when we did some testing, we were over 100. So uh, the values were, were, were coming out of line quite a bit. Um, total phosphorus, again, we've, our average exceeded it by double plus. So we had to clean that up and we know the flows were pushing the limit. I went through this before, so I'll be really quick. Just within a new screening room, I showed everybody this. Um, <coughs> the, the, the product out of there. We've put in a bunch of diff, uh, diffusers. We had 18, we added, I'm not gonna do the math, but we added 54, I guess. And now we got 72 diff diffusers through there. With an additional blower, a big blower, 40 horse blower, uh, we put a baffle in to direct the effluent through the middle of all that action. Uh, and then we cleaned all the lagoons. Um, we also included in our plan uh, a generator for the plant, which was a really good move. And then we did piping from the screen room. And then we brought power and water to, to this spot just. Uh, at the end of the phosphorus would be in the shorter one here. That's where we left off in the last update. We were talking about the disc filter we were going to put in place. I was just kind of showing you how the piping works off of that. Uh, and then we went to work, got that thing in place. The vault was done uh, over the course of the fall and early spring. The filters, uh, they look kind of like what this guy's holding here. There's five or six of them that make a circle. So you get a big, a big circle, and that's one disc. We've got four of them in a row here, uh, and they sit in that chamber. And it's just, it's they're like, uh, they're like Councillor Malmus's uh, van in the seventies on the inside. There, they're just kind of fuzzy and nice. <laughs> uh, so we we've, we've got those down in the hole here, and the doghouse is all built. Uh, we've got a lot of guys standing around, but we were training that day, so I, I couldn't explain that. <laughs> There's two pictures here, the blue line kind of separates it. So when you go looking into the dog house, we've got our control panel here. There's a lot of stuff going on there for just a disc filter, but uh, it's, it's pretty intricate. We get one alarm. If something's not working, one alarm, and it calls out. And whoever's on call will get that. There will be no detail other than there's something wrong. And that's kind of how we wanted it. Uh, it's not going to be a, like a priority one, get you out of bed at two in the morning kind of thing. But through this, this control panel, it will tell us if we're having problems with some of the float valves, or if we're, you know, we've got a low, low level or a high level, or if the back pulse isn't uh, picking up enough off of the screen when it's cleaning. There's, there's a lot of different functions there anyway. So then you go down the steps and we've got our piping here. Just behind that wall there is where those disc filters sit on outside. 
So there's three pipes that come in and two of them are dedicated to the filters and the third one is for more solid waste. And then it gets routed in, into, the, into the rapid infiltration basins. So in our last update, we talked about mechanical done in March, we did that. We were talking about commissioning into March. Well, it was actually the first week of April, but it went well. And we're, uh, we're actually putting product through the filter now. So we're gonna be doing some testing for quite a while. Uh, we'll go through the summer, which is really gonna be the latest test for us. Ministry of Environment Permitting. There's, now there's two parts to this because we need to apply and up our levels so we have more capacity at that plant. So step one uh, is, is pretty quick and easy. And we've had a conversation already. I, I spoke to uh, the person in charge uh, a couple of days ago, and she's satisfied with the, with the pieces that we've put in place in that, in that uh, the system overall. She's gonna give us a quick 10% win. So we go from 11, 35 to 12.48 overnight, we've, we've upped our limit by 10% really quick, which is good, uh, but we're gonna need to do a municipal wastewater registration request, which is more in depth. It's gonna take a hydrologist, it's gonna take a geotech, it's gonna take a little bit of study and probably a tech memo from an engineer saying that, you know, we can, we can get rid of this much product and maintain some numbers. We have three years to do that. We're going to get going on it right away. I want to get that permit increased and as close to 2,000 as we can do, as, as close as we can. So, yeah, so that one's done. I'm not going to probably bring it back unless uh, there's some permitting info to share with you. But, uh, we're happy to get that done after, I don't know, I've been here eight years. I think it's been about eight years. Seems like, I think it's six. Just hang on, Daryl. Uh, does council have any questions in regards to that particular project? Oh, okay. Just a, a quick one. So you, you had three uh, levels you had to meet. I, I forget what the, the phosphorus yeah. and the other two, I'm sorry. <laughs> so with all those things, and, and then after you're, you're, you're doing your testing now, your comfort levels that you're going to achieve all those goals? Yeah, I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. The, the filter was intended to be a last piece to this project if we needed it. Well, everything we've done so far hasn't improved our numbers. And it was almost like the trump card at the end. If we have to play the filter, we'll do the filter. Uh, it's a 10 micron filter, which is aggressive. Um, it's going to take out all the suspended solids. I'm not, that number will go down to nothing, I'm sure. Everything I'm hearing, phosphorus doesn't have a chance going through that filter, so we're going to be good. Biological oxygen demand, uh, we should be okay. It should bring it down. If there's going to be a question, it would be that one in my mind. But again, they're saying a lot of that biological oxygen demand is it, it's the live stuff in the water. It's a it's a weird it's a weird thing that they track. Like the LJ would be really really high with with that because it's so rich in nutrients and stuff. We're going to clean a lot of that out with the filter as well. So I'm pretty comfortable that we're going to meet on that one and, and crush the other numbers. Thank you, Councilor Malms. No. Okay. Good. All right. Culture Anderson. Oh, I just want to make a comment, Daryl. I'm very sad that you're in the doghouse and that's just <laughs> <laughs> you caught that. <laughs> All right. Go on. I'll head mountain. Okay. Bike. Now, trying to get through the mountain bike trail. So this project is turning out to be a little bit like a mountain bike trail. We've had some highs and lows. <laughs> Uh, you know, I honestly thought this would be a quick win just to get the section 57 done and we were ready to send Everett up and start making the trail through the, through the woods. Uh, it's not quite that easy, but we've got the section 57 together and submitted. That was last May. So it's been in for, let's call it a year, almost a year. And as I've shared before, the province really wanted to push us towards a license of occupation so we had more control. We've submitted the plan that we want to do in that general area uh, with, with the intent of getting a permit of occupation over all of it, but a section 57 to get moving on it. Now, to get moving on it, we identified phase one at the bottom as an up track and a couple of little down tracks beside it. 
So they gave us a list of things to do. We got a pile of homework. We went back and we started working with uh, Tushwap Tra Trail Alliance. We checked a lot of boxes. One of the last boxes was we had to be able to play nice on the roadway or in that area. Make sure that you know there's no conflict with any of the users that are using that that logging road. So BC Timber Sales uh, was kind of our last piece to just get a letter of support and away we go. We had a conflict with them. So there, there was a meeting with BC Timber Sales and we learned oh, a few weeks ago, there's a block that they have down low in our phase one, phase, phase one area that they wanna put it on the market and then they wanna log it for the next two years. And so I've got a meeting tomorrow morning out on site with two BC timber sales people. And I am gonna see if there's any way we can play nice and work around this where we can do our trail and they can do their thing. At the very least, I'm gonna to try to convince them to do this in one year, not two. And in the, in the interim, I've got the top part that we identified as phase two and three I'm getting that GPS and it might already be done. It's being formalized. We're gonna submit that and, and leave that as an option for phase one so that we go up to the parking lot and do an uptrack from there. So we're gonna approach it on a couple of different fronts and just try to get it in front of uh, the province and get it, get it approved. Whether it's the lower part or the upper part, I really don't care. I just wanna get a trail started. So that's where we're at with that. Uh, the pump shop, we, we're still excited about this one. Nothing's really changed. Over the summer, we're going to get some community engagement going, and that's going to be by way of the parks uh, master plan when we start engaging the public with that. And obviously, we've looked at a few different designs. There's some options to move some things around. And this was the area that we kind of identified, and it's really to be determined, but we're, we're kind of eyeing up that area in Finlayson Field. So we'll uh, take that to the people and, and get some new stable right away. Kurt Road Culvert looks simple enough to put in. Uh, I know there's, you know, there was a day where the public works could put a culvert like this in and in days. It wouldn't be a big deal. It's not like that anymore. We've got a open span culvert like this that we've already sourced. Uh, this is the existing culverts. Uh, and that's probably as good a picture as you'll see of why we're needing to replace this. This one's rotten and the road is actually sinking now. This picture was taken this morning. It's not a very good picture, but you can see the stick on the uh, on the backhoe. We were doing a test pit there. The reason we're doing a test pit beside the creek is because we're trying to satisfy DFO. We've got approvals. We've got the survey design, environmental impact assessment, construction plan. Flynn Rose happy. DFO is not happy because they're thinking that we're going to be creating too much turbidity for the eight different varieties of fish that they've they said are, are, are in the area. So we're still targeting August. We're gonna satisfy the DFO. I know this is a really busy map. All I wanna really show is this, is this is the creek going across under the road. And so this is what we're attempting to do to satisfy um, DFO. And that's to put in a coffer down. And we were digging here today, this test pit to see how what kind of integrity was in the road or in the, in the, in the ground, sorry, uh, 10 feet down. And so we're doing some testing and we are gonna put a bypass in place and then cover it. And this will get built in two stages over the course of one week. So we don't have to shut down the road. That's the intent. And uh, our environmental guy is pretty confident that DFO is gonna be okay with this plan. So that's where we're at. That's going to be the bypass. We've talked to the property owners that are circled in red here. They're aware of what we're doing. We're going to restore stuff when we're done. Uh, Beach Park, little pieces left. Obviously, the building's done, but we've just got a little bit of uh, ducting to do and put in an inline heater in there. Pergola is going to be re reinforced with the small railing. That stuff uh, should be getting powder coated this week, so I'm hoping in the next few weeks we start uh, jazzing up the, the Beach Park a little, little more. Uh, trail is going to be enhanced. We're going to do that asphalt trail. That was uh, the Vision Zero grant that will help us do that. Playground's been pre-purchased. We're going to install that uh, last week of May. I was just speaking with uh, 
uh, one of the fellows that's going to help install it. And then we'll do the SASU art project at the same time. We're going to try to do some work at the same time because the archaeology archaeology uh, costs for the construction of this really, really high on this project. So I, I won't get into a whole bunch of detail, but just to put this playground in, we're looking at like 31 auger holes and they're like a foot wide and have to go like three feet deep. And I could see, I could see crews of archaeology people out there for, you know, three or four days playing through our through our, our piles of sand and stuff. So there's an option here and it's uh it's five inch channel and we're gonna we're gonna weld it together and build the base. It's done in places where there's sensitive ground. And I love the idea. So for for a few few thousand dollars we've got steel and we're gonna get a welder in and we're gonna put this thing together and it'll stand and then be buried. Thank you, calling that on. Can I just ask a quick question please? When uh, you started this project the whole beach park and the whole building. Didn't you already have archaeology proved and done already? Yes and no. It's they they need a monitor every time you scratch the dirt. Okay. Thanks. Okay, let's build that. Go ahead, Daryl. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, that's an old slide. I heard something there. But, so that's the bridge. Um, where we're at now is the final deck survey. They've got four sections of railing put up, two on each end. Uh, they've put in 70 loads of riprap. We've got 50 to go. Membrane and paving. I didn't put a date beside it. I, I don't know. I'm being told middle of May. So let's hope for middle of May. And then they, they restore the site. So I'm thinking with the pavers being around till the end of May, if they're getting it done, we'll get it done then. Just a few extra items. Uh, we've got an additional charging station we're looking at. I'm getting some pricing on that. And as for paving, I'm hoping to catch uh, Valley right away here before they, they leave. They, Young Street, we're going to try to get them to look at that effort as well. Uh, but uh, a more RFP that's closed, like the vehicle for bylaw, uh, Jen had done some digging and got an RFQ prepared. Thank you for that. And uh, the biofuel facility, we've got uh, April 22nd. I'm breaking on. That's it. Wow. Yeah. What are you doing in your spare time? Yeah. Good job. He's hanging in the doghouse, girl. <laughs> in the doghouse, yeah. How much questions from Council to Council Bush? Go ahead. To the chair. There are here a couple questions. Uh, the Pike Park. Um, we have a letter, Scott has a letter from uh, Grace from BC Timber Sales and she wants to come and do a presentation to council. Um, have, have, who, are you, who are you meeting with, with? I'm meeting with Grace tomorrow, yeah. Okay. And and one of her cohorts, I'm not sure who else. Yeah, yeah just a um, important to see if we can work something out there. And they still want to, they still want to log two months and uh, so it would be good to yeah. work together. Mm -hmm. Um, in regards to the bridge, um, the survey, is that for elevations and stuff like that? Or is that what the survey is about? Yeah, yeah. Are we cautious about <laughs> the payment process with uh, Vic Van Al, um and the pavers? Because I know the pavers haven't been paid for some stuff, some stuff. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I can't really speak to where that's at with them right now. But uh, I'm just, I'm trying to keep all avenues open to make sure that uh, if we can't go one way, we can go another and get that thing done. So. Just a cautious. All right. Any other comments or questions? Go ahead, Mel. I know your budget's kind of tight on the bridge, but still able to do that black fencing along the dog, dog park side. We sort of asked that about a year ago. And, uh, you might not have funding for it. I don't know. That's part of the plan. It is part of the plan. Great. Thanks. Yeah. All right, any other comments? Go ahead, Devin. I just want to publicly acknowledge that this bridge project and the management of it has been extremely challenging because of the, you know, the overall uh, construction led by Vic Van Isle and, and all the problems with the subs that most of you have heard. Uh, but Daryl's done an outstanding job managing that, trying to keep a lid on 
all the different stakeholders involved because his focus has always been and remains the completion of the bridge. <clears throat> and he's asked to provide deadlines. It's out of his powers because he is not the general contractor or the project manager. He is the face and voice of the district. He can only do a best guest estimate as to when these things will be completed. And it's been a real challenge in trying to manage this project because of the actions of the general contractor to our dismay. And I just want to publicly acknowledge that, uh, you know, Daryl's trying to keep a lid on this, trying to get this bridge done. The good news is, is that it's passable, that you can actually use it. And I think the people appreciate that, but it has not been easy because of the, of the overall uh, with the, with the uh, project manager and the contractor. So um, I'm very pleased that, uh, that Daryl has been able to represent us. So I want to thank you for that, Daryl. If, all right. Thanks, Daryl. I have to say, as I drive across that bridge four or five times a day and seeing it coming near completion, and we uh, be awesome once we get uh, a membrane on that and uh, and the paving done, and uh, and uh, let us know when that it's all done. Well, I'll know, and uh, we'll have Cheryl uh, put the we'll put the ribbon across that thing, and we'll have a have a ribbon ceremony cutting and uh, and. Uh, officially uh, open up that bridge. Uh, it's going to be a, a great asset for the community in the future. All right, um, community services, Jason. Yes, thank you to the chair. Uh, last time I did a very extensive update. So this one's a smaller one, just to, some things that are coming up quickly to give to community and to councils for their information. Uh, the first one obviously is this Saturday is our Easter event. Uh, our first event in a long, long time. Hopefully get the community out there. We've asked uh, everybody to sign their kids up online and we've got over 100 kids signed up online so far and we'll expect to be a few more coming as far as that goes. The event starts at 9.30 in the morning with some crafts and uh, activities, uh, face painting, the fire department's there, the Easter Bunny will be there for pictures, that type of stuff. Uh, and then at 10.30, the actual Easter egg hunt starts and it's divided up into age groups starting at 10.30 with the youngest ones and finishing off about 10, uh, 10 11 o'clock with the oldest ones. So that's coming up. So if, you, if your kids aren't signed up yet online, please go and, and do that as quickly as you can and join us on Saturday morning for some fun. Um, another thing that's coming up quickly is to encourage people to watch the advertising on our website and at other locations in the next week or so. Uh, Recreation will be having our consultation um, with the public coming up at the end of the month, uh, end of April and beginning of May. A couple of locations will be the Senior Centre and, and here at District Hall as well. So we'll be putting up the times and locations and, and where that's possible to do that. Um, we're looking for people to come out and tell us what they want to see for the recreation and culture pursuits in the Sycamus uh, area and uh, also to tell us what skills they have that we can tap into um, to, to uh, offer more activities for the community. So that's number two. And then number three is, although Canada Day is a little ways away yet, we have obviously a full event coming. Uh, everything from the hockey tournament, the fireworks, music activities, fear of food, beer garden, it's all coming. Um, but we do have calls out right now. We're looking for bands, we're looking for food vendors, and we're looking for a group to run the beer garden. So those calls are out right now to the community. Uh, if anybody's interested, uh, please give us a call and we'll get back to you and, and let you know if you can be part of those events. So all that type of stuff's rolling around the band really, really fast. We're focusing on that a lot and I just want to get those out there. Council know it's there and let the public know that we're looking for their ideas. So that's it for me for today. All right, comments or questions for Jason. All right, go ahead, Gord. Yeah, good work, Jason. Thank you. I've never missed one of the Easter egg hunts, and uh, I, I will be able to attend this year. But hope it all goes off well, and hopefully, some other councillors can help hide some Easter eggs. <laughs> go ahead, Jeff. You're not supposed to go there to compete against these. He tackles them. Just see all the eggs. Yeah. <laughs> It's just nice to know that the Easter egg hunt is going to take place, and with the with COVID and, uh, and the challenges that we've had around COVID, and then uh, get the community out, and uh, and I'm sure it's going to be well attended, and and I know there's a few councillors that are going to attend as well. We're going to hide eggs, and anyway, good job. I'm glad to see that uh, that event taking place. Looks like the weather's going to come up a couple of years with COVID. The weather's going to be good too. So. All right, thank you. All right, um, bylaw enforcement, John, you're up. Uh, give us the details. 
Council um, through the chair again has been a, a slow month for new complaints. Um, of course, that's allowed uh, me to work on some longer outstanding files, some of which are hopefully coming to a close and uh, be able to record those later. Um, we get a few patrols in the evening and the, and the early morning out from Tim's uh, talking to truck drivers and getting them to move on and, and such. So um, I have noticed in the last few days that there has been less truck drivers parking out there. It, it'll be an ongoing process. Other than that, if there's any questions. Comments or questions? Go ahead, Jeff. <coughs> Through the chair, John. Um, Tim Hortons was supposed to be putting in their uh, early. Yes, they are. Do you know what the date of that is going to be? I don't have a date on it as of yet. Uh, it's actually on my uh, to-do list for next week. Okay. Was to approach them and try to get a firm date from them. Okay, thanks. All right, go ahead. Yes, yeah, through the chair. Um, yeah, with, uh, John, we had uh, Mary and we were talking about uh, at the Husky there where they're the trucks are narrow, you know, parking on the streets there and not in the Husky parking lot. And they're actually really stacking up. I know when I came in yesterday or last night, they were all stacked up. The parking lot was empty, but they were parking on actually right on the road again. So just want to keep you aware of that. Thanks. Uh, through the chair, yeah, it's definitely one of the hot spots where I issue a fair amount of tickets. <clears throat> all right. Anything else? All right, thanks, John. Thanks, John. All right, uh, moving on to uh, building and development. Scott, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, building permits, um, so year to date, we're up to about 20. We're at this time last year, we're at 12. Um, March is about the same number of permits, but uh, one big project of 900,000, which is the, the numbers up quite a bit. Questions? How much your questions? That's awesome. Go ahead, uh, Bob. It's good to see the ongoing development of our town with all those permits and stuff. It's exciting. Yeah, uh, attending the planning committee today and uh, lots going on and uh, busy department in our planning department. All right, uh, one uh, major conversation around uh, short-term rentals and uh, sooner or later, we're gonna get that bylaw in place. All right. Um, Moving on, website updates. Uh, Sarah, you have the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you through the chair. Uh, staff will be providing a website update. Uh, while the website update, I'm not sure why it's showing out of line on the screen. Different font. Okay, so it's going to be like that through the whole thing. <laughs> uh, so bear with me. Uh, so while the website is just one of the tools the district uses to communicate with citizens, it is an important communication channel with more and more people accessing the internet, or sorry, the internet for their information. Our website is www.sycamus.ca. <coughs> Okay, so up for discussion, we'll be talking a little bit about website analytics, design upgrades, content creation, a look at what's next, and a little bit about our community e newsletter. So, Google Analytics helps us determine how the website is performing. So, here we have our top channels indicating how people are accessing our site. You will see organic searches make up the highest percentage of traffic followed by direct links, which involve directly entering the URL and the address bar of the web browser being used. The social uh, channel is quite strong, so that demonstrates traffic from our social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. We also have the email channel, so this is traffic directed from links in an email, such as our e-newsletter that's sent out monthly, and referrals, so those are um, when people are accessing the site from external uh, external websites. So here we will show our top five pages. So currently that is our homepage. 
our popular traffic circle camera. Uh, information on short term rentals, online registration for our recreational programming, and our community calendar. <coughs> so from sorry. Uh, from March 1st to 31st, there were a total of 7,858 sessions, website sessions. Uh, 4,011 users accessed the site. Of those, 3,445 were new users. And they spent about uh, 1 minute and 47 seconds in on the site on average. Looking at behavior, we can see here that the majority of people are viewing the site from their desktop, followed by their mobile devices, and a small percent are using tablets. As we <laughs> the last slide, we have a large percentage of new users shown here at just over 70%, and just over 26% are returning users. Uh, sessions by country, so not a huge surprise here. Uh, the majority is from Canada, with some from the US, Mexico, and even India, the Philippines, the UK, Costa Rica, and South Africa. <clears throat> so Google Analytics also provides some information on demographics. Again, no surprise that the largest user groups are between the ages of 18 and 34. Uh, age groups 55 to 64 and 65 plus are on par at 5.5%. Uh, it also tells us that the majority of users are uh, male versus female. These are overview reports, uh, so they may not be entirely representative as some um, users don't have demographs, def, sorry, demographics attached to their usage. Okay, so looking at website upgrades, and we an exciting new upgrade is the Quick Link Scanner on our homepage. Uh, so Quick Links, highlight web pages of public interest and current projects. They improve accessibility for website users. Staff may adjust the featured pages at any time. So as the election nears, we'll be adding more content to the elections webpage. This is a situation where it will be helpful to have the page added as a quick link. Uh, currently our quick links feature sit sick in this video, maps, information on short-term rental regulations, the Shushua Filling Center project, online services, services for utilities and property taxes, and again, the traffic circle camera. In addition to the quick links, we have revamped the layout of our news and events on the homepage. So this includes the addition of two secondary feature articles, which are anchored with images. Previously, we could only choose one feature article a new sidebar, which is anchored to the left of the page, and an event sidebar, which is anchored to the right. So here I'll just show a home page before and after. So before on the left and after on the right, which also includes our quick links bar. And up top on the menu, we've included our branded colors of the Eagle River Cedar Brown. Another feature we have implemented is a new article style. So article styles are design templates for featuring content on our pages. The accordion style as seen here uh, expands once it's selected and allows for increased content on one page. Um, we, it includes the single column option and then the um, two column option. And this article style reduces the amount of overall scrolling. So in addition, we have um, included Sigma's <laughs> branded colors and icons, uh, direct links to external pages such as maps, online services, explore sigma.ca, the Sigma chamber, and we're working on website web page combinations to declutter and improve navigation for users. So an important aspect of any website is content creation. Um, staff will continue to ensure this is a focus so the public has access to current information. So this is being achieved through news posts for current information, including public notices, press releases, meetings and events, uh, community calendar updates, building out content on existing web page, web pages, such as Marion Council web page, and the creation of new, page, new web pages, such as one that we've done for communities in Bloom. Um, I won't go through those right now, but we can, you can take a look. <laughs> 
Uh, so what is next? So staff is committed to a continued focus on website maintenance and content development to ensure information is relevant and to improve the overall user experience. And I'd like to take just a moment to share about the community e-newsletter. So this is a great way to stay up to date with district information. The newsletters are sent out monthly and you can subscribe at any time from the homepage. You just have to scroll to the bottom of the page and enter in your email, and then you can receive information monthly about what's happening in the district and information is pulled from our website. Uh, so just a few stats, the last newsletter sent in March was sent to 636 subscribers. It had a 99.37 delivery rate, a 67.56% open rate, and a 32.44% click rate. So that concludes today's website review. As always, staff welcomes feedback from the public regarding the website, um, and you're welcome to contact us at any time. It's not supposed to look like this. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, I'm just gonna go with it. And I just wanna say thank you to Mary Council for the opportunity to share this information. And if there are any questions, I will answer those now. How much are questions from Council? Jeff? Well, I'd like to say the staff did a good job of that because it was one of my biggest complaints about our website that you could never find anything on there. And I think those quick links will make it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So thank you. All right, any other comments or questions? Good job, Sarah. Thank you. Good work, Sarah. Thanks. That's a project uh, that we've uh, needed to uh, improve on and you're doing a great job. Thank you. And uh, and I hope that the community buys into this now and uses this website because it's that important. Probably more difficult now when it comes to communications, when it comes to all the different elements, when it comes to social media and newspapers and web pages and everything else. So. And uh, we, we seem to get blamed for not being able to communicate, but we try to communicate in every aspect that we possibly can on the website is that important. So good work, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, active transportation network plan, <clears throat> term report. Um, Scott, do you wanna comment on this? And thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so this is the just a draft of an interim report. So it's about a report that uh, is half done. Um, Jeremy and I have been working with um, Urban Systems on just providing them with some of the background information. And then they were here for a site visit doing a conditions review and just talking about some of the issues. We've gathered some of the information provided to them in various forms. Um, and then really it's it's about what happens next. Um, and uh, the next big chunk is gonna be the public consultation. We're gonna do that between May and, uh, and through the end of July, August. Um, <clears throat> Steffi's gonna uh, manage that as, as well with our Parks and Trails Master Plan. So we're gonna do some, some consultation, um, probably at the high school with some there and then at the community. Alert. We'll keep your eye open for that this summer, but um, right now we've just uh, we're just we're just at the beginning. All right. How many pages is this report? One right now is about fifteen, but it's probably going to be three times as long, if not longer, because we really have the the meat of the document to get through. Um, once once we do the public consultation and then really look at the facilities, then we're going to expect. Some, some projects and some uh, cost estimates for the projects. One, one other aspect to this is the active transportation pedestrian bridge. Um, so we've been working with urban systems. We submitted an application to, to do a study on that. So feasibility study for that. So it's gonna be another part that contributes to this as well. Thank you. Comments or question from council? I can hardly wait for the next 15. I'll answer. I'll ask in the next 15 pages. Councilor McCabe. Yeah, just thank you for your work on that and, and looking for the next phase of the report. Incredibly important. Anyway, go ahead, Devin. I know it's only in draft form, but on page 17, um, we should change the title. It's not the North Okanagan Rail Trail Committee. And I know I don't want to get it confused with the Vernon Initiative, but 
I know that'll get changed. And I think, yeah, if we can get more content and more, more words and, and uh, expand on how important that Ped Bridge is. <laughs> Good in the plan. It's this plan that's going to accompany a future grant application. So I'm not pick, I'm not picking on it. I'm just I know it's in the draft stage. Scott just captured those. I think we should call the, the rail trail and this would be already in over rail. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Scott. Uh, any other comments on this? All right. We'll move on. Uh, development cost charges. Bylaw number 951, DCC charges. Councillor Malmus, you wanted to comment on this? Yeah, I asked for this to come forward because uh, I had a meeting with Scott uh, last week, was it Scott, or maybe half a week before that, two weeks ago. And basically, there's some individuals building some industrial buildings, uh, there's residential. So I just want to get some clarification. So basically, if you're going to build the house, you got to pay six thousand or some dollars for DCCs, then you got to add fifteen hundred dollars for water, then you got to add another forty five hundred for a sewer connect, and the list just goes on and on. So by the time it's done, it's a big number. Although we strive to get the lowest DCC anywhere, by the time it's all said and done, it's still a huge number. So in our industrial out there. The DCCs range between fifteen and thirty thousand, but at the same time, we're offering them uh, the tax credit. We have a tool in our toolbox. <coughs> Excuse me, I, I couldn't find it in here. Maybe Scott could point it out, but there is a way that you could take the DCCs, spread them out over three years, is it, Scott? Right. So you're going to get financing on something to add your upfront costs so you could get tax back over 10 years. This, I never supported that way from the get go. We should have found a way to work with the DCCs because if you're building anything and you're financing the upfront costs, that's money. A little bit of tax on the district sycamore's portion that you're going to get over 10 years. And then it's prorated after five years. So I just brought it here today to ask if council would, because in our finance budget, we were talking about this tax credit. We have one for downtown, we have one at the industrial, you have one at the Bill Hotel, you have, we got it all over the place. Yeah, I think it would be more prudent for the developer and the district, other than give it up then, give up some of the DCs now, spread it out over the three years, which I think that's all we're allowed to do by law, provincial law, right? We can only spread it out over three years. Go ahead, Scott. So the, there is an opportunity for, to, I, I, for anybody to, to pay DCCs over three years. So it, it's a tool that's, that's available for anybody right now. Right. And, and so we were talking about the elimination of some of the property tax. So I was just trying to, is there a mathematical way through our CFO that we could actually get 10 years worth of tax credit? Is there a way that you could take an example and kind of make it that this is, would be the tax savings, but if you did the DCCs this way, and, and is there a way to stretch those DCs out know, just a little longer than the three years? Like, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's a provincial mandate or if that's district of Sycamore's choice. Kelly, do you have a comment? Um, well, uh, I hear exactly what you're saying. We're trying to minimize upfront costs for developers rather than for a 10 year period of taxes. So, but unfortunately, the DCCs and the taxes are totally different buckets. So, we can't really tie them together. However, we do have money in this current year's budget, 20000 to do a DCC bylaw review, just to take a look at what projects we have, just make sure everything is distributed the way we want it. So, I think maybe we can just revisit the bylaw at some point this year and see see what we can do if there's any other way but but right now we can't the a developer can pay a third a third and a third however they do have to have a letter of credit for the whole amount right so go ahead chef and well, like i said i was just because we were discussing 
the idea of a back script and, and, and reduced it in some areas because it wasn't really being used. So I was just looking for an incentive for development basically to have an opportunity, which I don't know how well publicized that is. Like how many people asked you if they could spread it out over three years? Go ahead. Um, only on really large projects. So, you know, you get, we've only really had it once. So uh, like a, a 40 unit subdivision where the DCCs would be very, very high. Um, only in that, in, in cases where they're lower, you know, less than $10,000 maybe, you know, perhaps they don't see a benefit. I mean, yeah. we, we don't go and offer it, but uh, yeah, we don't get a lot of people asking about it either, so. Okay. <laughs> Colleen? Yeah, that was gonna be my question. Yeah, I know we have a tax revitalization for the uh, industrial park. I think it's 10 years, five years, and then the second five years gradual. But maybe that is a tool you can put in your toolbox when you're offering this and go, and you can you know, pay their DCCs over three years. Cause I do agree, it's a big hit for developers in town. So, go ahead. Yeah, through the chair, we also talked about Scott um, um, for developers that are selling product. Is there any possible way we can have the DCCs on the, on the after the sale, like provide a letter of credit, but also Put it in delegation because all these developers do their their permits <laughs> up front before they even really do that. and and really they don't you know they don't sell, they, they might not sell the unit for a whole year or two years can they pay the DCC on sale and every time they have a sale they you know they draw down on their letter of credit. The answer that? Yeah. Um, so the, for residential, I know the rules are slightly different for, and, and essentially for when you create a new lot, that's when you pay the DCCs for subdivision. Yeah. The rules for residential are slightly different and you, I, I believe there is a way you can pass them on to the sale, but then it just gets passed on to the person purchasing it, right? So it's, it's really just pushing it back. It, there is a way to do that. I'm not sure about um, industrial, but I think if we're gonna, how do that review? That's when we look. We look at the bylaw and then see what we can do in it. Our bylaw, the way it's structured right now, there's not a whole lot of flexibility, but maybe it's possible, but I, I can't answer that right now. Okay. Yeah, and if we could look into that, because it is like a huge upfront cost if you're doing 60 units or something like that, and you have CCs up front for at six thousand dollars a door, you know, it, it's a huge hit for the developer and, and it makes it more more of an incentive for them to develop here. So thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, so Kelly, um, we should maybe take a review on this based on Councilor Malmas' recommendation and uh, concerns council has and then bring them back. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, so we're gonna move on. Uh, we have the son of Stomp here. Uh, first off, a recommendation that the Council of the uh, Committee of the Whole now rise and report. I need a mover on this. Councillor Malmas, Councillor Aries. And uh, I'm not sure who wants to speak on, be on behalf of the stomp, but uh, I got a feeling that there's quite a bit of uh, support here. Uh, and you must be. Diana Blue. Diana? CEO of Sunstorm, AKA SOS. Okay, good, okay. Well, you have the floor and we've had a short discussion on this, but um, give us your take and uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you. All right, good evening, Mayor and Council. Bear with me. First time I've ever done this. I don't know how to address you properly or anything, so forgive me. Thanks for having the meeting tonight. Again, my name is Diane Blue. What happened was I made a phone call and I asked permission to use the dog park for an event similar to Summer Storm, not as big and as commercial, back to the old group, as I volunteered for 19 years. And I was a part of the very first ones out on BD Ave in San Ways I've never done this before, I said on the phone call. So any and all direction, advice and procedures, protocols, would be greatly appreciated. Please mold me so I can get this done correctly. All of a sudden a meeting was set up and it was very quick. I was extremely excited 
feeling very optimistic that this was fast tracking due to the history of the similar event going for six years here in town. In the meeting, there was direction about permits and advised on certain steps and such. Um, but some of these things I could do at a later date, not knowing if COVID issues would arise or anything like that. That's one of the reasons why it came at a later date. I mentioned car wash usage, that I would only want to use the shower part of them, as I've seen what could happen when they're overused. That one year was just not very nice at all. I was going to bring in all my own porta potty, so it was just showers I wanted. This is when I was informed previous renters damaged the unit and they would look into it being repaired if it could be done in time. So there was no mention of cost or monies of any sort as we were waiting on the repairs and then they would inform me. I'd like to correct the fact that I never expected the car wash for free, especially after they just told me somebody previously rented it. Then as the meeting was winding down, I asked three or four different times, does this confirm I can promote this? Like seriously, can I promote this? The answer that came back was, I don't see why not. We have a few steps we have to go through. So what did we do? First thing Monday morning, we started promoting it. Well, according to a recent news article, I guess there was more steps to be taken. And for that, I'm my bad. I, I didn't know. I thought my phone call, my meeting was the protocols, the procedures. I don't know. Seriously, don't know. So just to say that that article was very shocking, um, maybe a phone call or an email with correction, constructive criticism and direction, so we could have avoided this situation, the, the comments that were said, and the backlash from the community, maybe all of that could have been avoided by just saying, hey, hold your horses, Diane. There's a few more steps to take. So anyways, here we are. And as you can see, your community and some of my friends and supporters are here asking for it to go forward. I'd like to address some of the issues that were, were brought up. Words like bikes, babes, and beers. Okay, first off, I'm not a baby, but I'm heading this. <laughs> Just saying. Bikes? I don't ride. I have a junky old blue truck out, out there. And beer? I don't drink beer. I'm a rum girl. These are generic words. When they come from me, it is meant as that simple words. That's it. My grandmother always taught me, say what you want to say. It is up to that person to take it as you meant it, not how they interpret it. Anyways, back to bikers. There's a stigma to the bikers. I can say almost everyone that shows up, and I say almost because there has been history of some other bikers there, but they're people who have a passion to ride bikes. They wear leathers for protection. It also keeps out the wind. I like my leathers. It makes me not cling to my roles. You know, so I don't like the stigma of the word biker. Um, what else? Beer. Beer garden. Somebody came up with that. I don't know who it was, but of course that gives a stigma. Beer, bikes, and babes. It's not meant that way at all in any way. Um, hang on here. Okay. The event I am planning is on a much smaller scale than the well established summer storm. We have to start off somewhere, and I don't want to start off in the red. I want to be able to donate like summer storm did. I remember watching the checks out in Silver Creek, I remember watching the checks here. Just lots of giving, and that's what we want to do. I am planning on camping on the site for one main reason, safety. We don't want drinking and riding, drinking and driving. So if everything is contained, it's been proven by Summer Storm. It's successful. There's no events, like no 
I'm excited to dance, you know what I mean? <coughs> Some have set that standard and I want to follow that as it was a proven equation. I was advised to have a security when I was in that meeting, which I'm well aware of. I wanted to do that and I have to talk to Sergeant McNeil, which I will, but I have to have this meeting now. I will have a liquor, liquor license in place. I also will have liability insurance. I will have vendors submit their permits and such as per requested. I am open to further instruction and steps that I must take, but please allow this event to take place. The last two years has been one heck of a ride. We want a bit of a normal in our lives. We want to support the local businesses. You remember that year when there was no gas? I went to go get a slushy. There was no slushy. Remember that year it was successful. Those businesses did very, very well that year. Let's make that happen again. These businesses are needing this huge influx of income, not just by this event, but the Monashi there right afterwards. Having this dog park shut down for two weeks or two and a half weeks, is it really worth denying my event because of the inconvenience? I feel the businesses would say differently in this town as what was said on the rant and rave. Um, I'm in hopes you can now direct me to what steps I can take or I should take so this event can go forward and happen July 15th weekend. Thank you for your time. And done. Any questions? Oh, is that what I supposed to say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. All right, Council, have you got any questions? Have you got any comments, Councilor? Mom, let's go ahead. Bikes, spades, and beers. You know, the stop has been here for seven years. The first one that happened was was bike. Uh, it was kind of uh, what the heck was that guy's name? Ray. But he had he had a kind of a bike show on Main Street. Oh, Sturgis North. Yeah, and so and that stomp was tied to that. And then, so that's where that bike kind of got into the picture. And there's a lot of people that show up for this event with a bike and a tent. Because the dog park's not that big. You're not showing up with my fifth wheel and my trailer. It's 70 feet long. So, you know, there's room for me and nobody else. And that's not what this is about. But, you know, kudos to you for trying to get it fired up. Uh, I guess the question would be for me is, is what asks would you have from the council or the district of Sycamus? I'm sorry, pardon? What are your asks? My you asks? Want, you want the wash car? You want this? You, they used to want the stage. They wanted us to put up fencing. They wanted, they wanted, what are your asks? Those, that's the big thing is we have to know what your asks are. Sorry. In that meeting, um, it was told to me, I asked if there was any fencing that was available. I didn't say for free or anything, I just asked. And they said, no, it's tied up or something. I said, oh, that's fine. I have someone. So I have my own fencing coming. I want the car wash, wash car, car, <laughs> the showers. Um, I like having a shower every day. I, I just, I cannot stand the dust. But the potty um, water access, like uh, from my memory, correct me, there was water access for the vendors. And that's basically all I'm asking for in the dog park. I'm self-contained. I, 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 I have my own stage, the stage that we used to use in Silver Creek. It's just a trailer and the side comes up, the band goes in. I have music production. I have food vendors, merchants. Um, I have, I'm not asking for a whole lot handing out. It'd be nice for freebies. Yes, yeah, don't get me wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so I have a comment on this. So back in about 11 years ago, I think we were approached by the stomp and um, and it was actually the stomp that actually started to create 
vibrancy back in the town. It was the first event that we've had for a long, long time. And from that, there was a catalyst of other events that took place. I totally support you. I totally support you having this after two years of COVID and all the things that we've gone through and uh, the, the benefit that the stomp has brought to the community over the years. I think that uh, you've been a complete benefit. We've never had one single problem when it comes to the stomp. I've seen all kinds of other problems when I've seen cowboy events, when I, when I, which I chose to uh, go to when I was in Northern British Columbia. Even with the problems that we've had with the boating event out on the, on the narrows where boats are running into each other and whatnot. So I don't see where one event is going to make any much difference in the other event. And I do think that what you're trying to do is bring a bunch of people together and you will be beneficial to this community, but it's this council's decision to make. And so that's kind of where we went when Jason had the conversation with you. You gave me the call and I gave you the right people to talk to. And, uh, and so we were going through the process and it kind of went off the rails a little bit. I still don't know where it's going to go when, because it's still going to be up to this council to make a decision as whether or not it's, uh, it's going to be a benefit to the community. <clears throat> but I think bringing people into the community, whether it's on a bike or in a motorhome or on an RV or, or on their boat, I think uh, all of it will be beneficial to the community. So I have to say that um, you know, I, I really have to give you a lot of respect for coming here and voicing your opinion when it comes to trying to have an event here in town. So I totally support it, but it'll be up to this council to make the decision. Thank Councilor you. Mom, it's up to you. Yeah, so just in conclusion, now that you put your ask forward for nothing, basically, or that's what you were told you were gonna get, uh, I don't see any issue with you going through the process of the, the permit to, to do that because you still got some work to do. You still have to speak with Staff Sergeant Murray McNeil and you have to get the liquor license and you have to and you have to if you're providing defense. And you know what the rules are. You got to have a, one security guard for every 100 or 125 people. So, you know, uh, the stop was a, a five to 750 people event. I'm not sure that that will happen again, but uh, anything that happens in town, because we used to do events, uh, we, we had one every second week. We had hockey tournaments <coughs> in Canada Day, we had the stop, we had the August long weekend. I mean, we used to have lots of events and that's what got us kind of on the map. And I think it would be remiss of us not to welcome you guys back in a different format. Go ahead, Gordon. To the chair, yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming and uh, whether you got on the right, got off on the right foot or the wrong left foot, <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of, it was a shocker to us when first we heard of it last last week. And, uh, but yeah, <coughs> coming in and, uh, you know, we'll, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll hear, hear an application come in, Jason, work with Jason and and uh, we'll get, you know, see, see how it goes. Culture Anderson and Evan. Okay. Um, thanks, Diane, and thanks everyone for coming in. Yeah, I was uh, a little taken back last week when it came up. Um, beers or bikers, beers and babes or whatever the, the, <laughs> the event was, but the event was also rolled out as adult only, not family, family friendly, which we're a community that supports family friendly events. Um, it sounded like a, and last week when you saw the comments in the paper and I was one that was like, what is going on here? Um, it sounded like, um, a tenting party where everyone's just going to get together and listen to a band and drink beer and have a, a camp out. So maybe you can tell me or explain to me a little bit more of what's going to happen and what the contribution to the community is going to be. Do I go ahead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope. Same as Summer Stone. Were you aware of what Summer Stone was? Did you attend to one of the... Yes, I did. Hey, it's the exact same thing. Exactly the same thing. You had a comment, sir? Um, I have a question for you. What's the difference between the beer garden of the 
Son of Storm. We're the beer garden the next week at the uh, Monastery Music Festival or the beer garden that you guys have downtown events. What's the difference in the beer gardens? I didn't say there was anything to do with beer gardens. Are you drinking at it? I didn't say anything about beer gardens. I just said well, you're, you're the saying family events. Yeah. Right? Okay, the stomp, the, the stomp it is a family event up to where the beer gardens are. Yeah. Which is the exact same as Monastery Music Festival or one of your festivals downtown. So what's the difference? Yeah. My understanding was that yeah, we got children, your point. We got your point. Go ahead, Colleen. My understanding was that families were not going to be involved in this at all. Children won't be around alcohol. I don't believe in so being around alcohol. So during the day, you've got vendors. Which vent? What kind of vendors do you have? Vendors, in? Uh, clothing, um, art, tattooists. Um, what else? Leather works, yes. So, um, sorry, Diane, will children be allowed in that part, like during the day? It's not an atmosphere I would like children around. Okay. It's just, it, Summer Stomp has always been adult oriented. Aunts, uncles, grandmas, and grandpas come up here. They rent a condo, and I know this for a fact all of them, all from gray hair down to a drinking age, cap off, they show up. And mm -hmm. it's just, uh, thank you. You wanted to comment, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I mean, it was Stone by her went to was in 1997, and it's always been ages 19 and over. It's never been a family oriented event. So I don't know where that's you know, it's been since it's been here. Yeah, before. perhaps, you know what, perhaps because it was downtown more, you know, yeah, and it was like it was a whole family that's event. That's not the small town so. So just a comment. Just a comment. Stomp out at the bog, dog park was always an adult event, and the family event took place on Main Street when it come to a, the bike event on Main Street. Yeah. It was two separate events, but it was it was the stomp that actually brought that event originally to Sycamore. So that's how I kind of see this thing. So anyway, um, the. Presentation, thank you, Diane. Uh, you've got the last word. Um, when we were in that meeting, J I do think her name is Jamie. We have Jamie and Jason, yeah. Yes. Um, we were talking about getting the seniors out because well, actually first it started off with which organization would you recommend that we encourage to do a pancake breakfast before we go on our poker run on Saturday? And they said the seniors. And I said, oh, Let's get them doing the scooter races again. And then we had a big fast <laughs> over that. So I said, do you mind taking that? And let's get the, going with that. Yeah. I'm open to doing something downtown as that. I don't want to spread myself thin like Steve Hammer and all the other organizers. They said it was a huge draining. And that's where I don't want to fail. So I'm willing to put things on the web page, on the Facebook page. Sycamus is doing this. We support them. We will come down absolutely and be involved in it. I don't know how to word it, but you know, it's it's. I don't want to be just. Hey, let's go up there and party. Let's do something. You guys are a community. You have a lot more of you than me. So you know. Let's do something together. I'll tell you the one thing about that senior scooter thing that was, <laughs> that was a big hit, boy. I, 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 I almost got run over it. I've never seen so much bashing of vehicles before in my life. Look, I'm gonna, uh, we got to move on with the meeting, but I'll tell you what's going to happen here. Uh, uh, the council will make a decision. They're gonna, and however the decision is uh, that they make, then they'll hand it back over to Jason and Jason will be in touch with you and then we'll go from there. But if you can coordinate something that's community minded, that would be a big benefit because that would be a, something that we'd really support. So okay. Councilor Malmas, you've got the floor and, and, then, and then Mr. Parliament. I, I just think that uh... It might be a little bit time sensitive based on the idea that we don't have another council meeting till the second week of May. So 
you need you need to know that I need you need to know that you're able to move ahead here sooner. Like yeah, I don't want to you're, you're talking to say, the, can I promote it and then be told, oh, you have to have a meeting. The fifteenth of May is gonna be kind of like I think a little too late if they're gonna promote. Might be, yeah, I can see that. Evan, you got the floor and then we'll, maybe we'll make a decision. Yes, I, I just want to thank you. And um, I think you did a very good job for someone who's uncomfortable speaking on the front. Uh, this is a friendly bunch. I think I think you address the the misunderstanding of the go ahead to market and promote. Yeah, council got surprised because they didn't know about it. And so council sort of wrapped staff's hands. That includes me, the knuckles, saying that staff approved this. Into a resolution. So, about the meeting with staff. And so in fairness to council, I think a lot of questions they asked, which is really just out of surprise. And then they saw on the internet that it's being marketed and promoted. I think your intentions are, are fair. We had a lot of questions then. They've been answered. So I, I know I'm satisfied. I met with Murray McNeil. He doesn't have an issue with the staff. I've attended the event before. Um, it's not for everybody. I do get people in the community who each year ask, is this something that Sycamus wants to promote? But you answered it. But I just wanted to set the record straight because I think this just started with the misunderstanding of jumping ahead on the marketing without council having the opportunity to hear what you presented tonight. And I believe we've got most of our questions answered tonight. So thank you for that. Thank you. So I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the event subject to the necessary permit and the applications. Anything else you want to add to that, Council? Go ahead, Jeff. No, I'll just second it. I'm going to second it? Yes. It's been seconded, so I guess you're asking for comments? Yeah, we're asking for comments. That's not the process, Your Worship. The process is for uh, an event organizer to uh, submit an application to staff, staff to review it and bring it to council. That's uh, the necessary permit application. Yeah, uh, uh, And they can bring it back to council. A resolution or a vote right now is not appropriate. It's, <laughs> you need to look at more information that's supplied by the applicant and, and review. <laughs> All right, we can we can we can go through that process. Uh, actually, Councillor McCabe is right. So, go ahead. I I understood that that meeting was my direction, and I was informed to get in my application. So that was coming, and then this all exploded. So I was trying to do process, and not knowing all the process, like. You just said a couple other things that I didn't know about the process. I, I, I'm that green. I, I am not knowing. Go ahead. No, there's there's been some misinformation, and it's it's not your fault. It's not our fault. But there has been some misinformation. Uh, we were exposed to uh, the big screen TV uh, with your website saying we found a location. Um, you're selling tickets, beers, baits, and bikers. Um, that's not part of the process. Uh, first, you put in an application, it's reviewed by staff, staff brings it to council with a recommendation of yes or no, or sometimes you don't have a recommendation, they just bring it forward for our consideration. It involves liquor licenses that involve approval from BC Liquor Board, from RCMP, and actually staff council is a process of approving your liquor license. So there's processes. Um, and I think it's inappropriate to vote on saying, yes, we're going to approve it, just send in your application. That's not how it works, and with all due respect to your worship. Um, we got caught off guard. We, we sort of got defensive. Uh, I apologize if, if that got off reported wrong in the media, because media doesn't always report things accurately on both sides. But the process is... Uh, Lay out your plans, show how the community is involved, um, how many security people are you doing the traffic control, are you going to shuttle people back and forth, from what all, all your logistics you put in, and staff will help you with telling you what you need in your application so it can be properly reviewed and then brought to council. Okay. 
Okay. One of the one of the problems that we've got with this whole thing is now it's becoming time sensitive and we've got to go through a, a fairly major review. Jason, can you comment on this as to what we what's necessary here so we can make a decision here sooner or later? Because yeah, when when we when we met, uh, we we haven't received the application yet. As 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 Diane said, we were, we asked for that application to come through, that, and that we would be submitting it to council after that after we arrived. So we still haven't gone through that process. So that has to happen. Where the confusion came in is in the advertising portion of it. As we all know, the Monashi Festival has been advertising since November, and they just so, so so I'm looking at them now. So there's sort of two a process and time sensitive <coughs> process. So how could how how quick could we could we go through the process and then maybe we could reach out to council and make a decision one way or another? We, uh, through the chair, we can we can review the, the application the day it comes in. That's that's not a problem, especially with the number of requests that are actually affecting the district, or which are very minimal uh, from what's been spoken. The, the the issue is the next council meeting isn't. It's until May 11th now, I believe, after this, because of the missing meeting in between. That's where the complication becomes. So in regards to Councillor McCabe's concerns, and we're dealing with the Monashi Music Festival, have we gone through the entire process with them at this particular stage? So they put in their application, and are we on square one with them as well? Uh, we we have just the the application was a conditional up to this point that they were working with so we've just now agreed as of last week to 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 give them their their permit uh, condition of use but this, so they have been working on a conditional permit up to this point. Councilor Malmas, go ahead. So can we reword that motion to be conditional to the application the same as we did in the sheet? Councilor Bushel had a comment and then I can go ahead. Talk about the resolution. Go ahead, Gord. We're all pretty handy and pretty close by. We could just have a quick special meeting once we receive mm -hmm. the application. We could have a pop in. Yeah. Have a special council meeting and get it done. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Got a suggestion? Uh, nope. So just listening to council. Um, and uh, so two options is that <laughs> motion could be defeated and we could wait for a formal application and a special meeting could be called. Um, let, let, let's just rescind this motion. Alternatively, at language could be added i'm just going to say like that preliminary approval uh, for this event at the dog park for those dates if council wanted to subject to like we already had the necessary permits and applications so um those are the two options but if you if you want to call the question on this it could be defeated and we could have the special meeting mm -hmm. can we not wish in this motion Rescind. I mean, if you'd have to carry it and then rescind it. So okay. just defeat it. Okay. Call the question. I'll call a question on the on the motion. All those in favor? Okay. All those opposed? Okay. It's defeated. Okay. Now you got to go through the process. Okay. So that's. Uh, you've, I think you've got direction, and uh, we'll see how this all turns out and come back to council. But if it, if I, Thank you. Uh, so council hasn't said no. Council's just asked for due, due diligence, basically, right? All of the staff. You do your homework, submit it to staff, staff reviews it, and we're, we're willing to hold a special council meeting to, to review it. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any spoke now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, where were we? I, I believe some of council had council report that they wanted to give. So I can go back to that. Okay, now getting back into uh, the actual meeting, um, council reports. Councilor Bush, you want to go ahead and have report? <laughs> Uh, I've been busy in the planning meetings, uh, short-term rental. Uh, I had a breakfast meeting with another short-term rental person this morning. Um, yeah, been busy with a couple of developers and a, and a developer in Calgary. And uh, yeah, so it was a uh, meeting. Oh, dear, dear. Things are looking good for St. Louis. I think so too. Councillor Anderson, go ahead. I um, agree. Things are looking good for St. Louis. I have <laughs> been in meetings as well. and. Met with a couple of folks off the ActDev. Um, the streets look great, Daryl, and good job. 
I still think that perhaps we should look at a street sweeper for Sycamus. No, he shakes it. Because <laughs> it, I, the, but this guy breaks down a little bit here and there, right? So, for time. For time. <laughs> so, but anyway, no, good job. Your team did a great job. Um, I'm working with the, uh, of course, you know, I'm a, I'm getting, I'm going to start sounding like a broken record about zebra and quagga mussels because it is such a threat to our province and to our water. So I am going to, I'm working with Sheila right now at the chamber and um, hopefully we can get a campaign together so every business in town can put the don't move a muscle or the clean drain and dry logo right on their site because this, again, this doesn't affect just marine operators or people on the channel or people with boats. It affects tourism. So all of those businesses should be rallying the government as well to uh, for more support on the um, boat checks um, coming into the province. So um, that I'm working going to be working with Sheila on that to see if we could get that spread around town. Then take this model and move it from town to town to town with the chamber. So we're we're trying to work on a a bigger picture, education, and uh, still fight to get some more financing. So. That's what's going on in my world. All right, Council McKay. Well, that's a real hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, excellent work, uh, Councillor Anderson, to uh, actually establish a template and then and then roll it out province wide. Uh, kudos to you. That's that's what we've, that's what we need. It's that's a province and provincial initiative. It's good that Sikkimus takes the lead in a few things, and thank you for doing that. You're um, yeah, not much in my end. Um, attended a couple of uh, workforce uh, housing webinars, uh, one today for about an hour. I had to leave early to come to council in one on Monday. Got a few interesting nuggets out of that and how to, how to move forward with that. So can move. Stopped in at the e-bus yesterday when it was parked at the Askew's parking lot there, trying to um, lobby the government to have um, a shuttled bus service, not just uh, stop by reservation, but actually a, a scheduled routine stop in Sycamus. So um, wearing two hats as a counselor, I went there and said, I, yes, I, as a counselor, I support that. And also as a president of Eagle Valley Transportation, I get my business cards that, you know, we transfer about 130 people to uh, appointments that uh, perhaps some of them could use your bus service also. So you appreciated that. And that's about all I got. Okay, thank you. Councillor Aries. Uh, thank you. I uh, attended the same workforce housing meeting on uh, Monday that Melk did. Um, we had a uh, attainable housing meeting uh, last week. Uh, so there's been a lot of reading reading case studies and uh, and stuff um, as uh, Airbnbs, short-term, long-term rentals are all tied in with housing and, and workforce housing and uh, the concepts all overlap and affect each other. And the more you learn, it's, it's, uh, it's very it's deep. <laughs> and there's a lot, a lot of options and a lot of solutions. Um, that's been my, my life. Councilor Malmas. I attended a few different meetings with, uh, I guess, the general public at large to do with some issues in the district that to do with uh, short-term rentals. So. Uh, we discussed a lot of it today at the planning and development committee meeting. So uh, it still has to come back to council. Some of the discussion that was done at it, but, uh, just basically discussed possibly trying to simplify the process a little bit. All right, Councillor Evans. Yeah, I've uh, been meeting with some folks with short-term rentals that want to talk about them and uh, um, went to the early years uh, meeting about uh, child development in town and trying to increase services to children and young families. Um, talked to other people about how they, uh, they can't find any housing in town and told them we're, we're working on it, trying to find some, some places for families that want to move here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just been meeting with the uh, principal of high school and and uh, things are looking up there, but uh, COVID's taking its toll on the staff of the high school. It's They're so glad when the masks were removed and they were able to go back to a sense of normalcy. So that was good. All right. 
Mayor's Breakfast uh, gave uh, the community a rundown on uh, some of our accomplishments. Um, Shushaw Tourism, uh, that is where, where we're going with the Shushaw Tourism and the Terms of Reference. Uh, uh, and uh, Carly has been involved and uh, is working on not only Shushaw Tourism and what's going to be beneficial uh, for the Shushwap and Sikamoos, but I think we're going to finally get results for for uh, what this community pays into Shushwap tourism. Um, of course, short-term rentals has been on our agenda and been well discussed uh, and uh, attended the Monashi Music Festival delegation the other day, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing that happen. We'll see what happens with this stomp. And... Um, and I had a conversation with Bill Miller in regards to the Habitat for Humanity, and they're excited about continuing to work with us. So that's happening as well. And um, uh, that's pretty much it for me. So um, we'll move on to uh, the DOS strategic priorities. Is there anything that council wants to discuss on the strategic priorities right now? I think there was one thing when it comes to um, the possibility, we haven't got it completed yet, um, when it comes to the rail, uh, but uh, the economic development coordinator from Spalatzen and, and Doug Thomas, the chief, would like to go for a ride down the rail trail. And so we're coordinating now. We haven't been able to get the right day involved with that yet. Um, that's been a discussion for me and Jeff to maybe try to put that together and get a couple of side by sides and go for that ride. We're hoping that we could do this maybe a week ago, but weather didn't permit it. Anything else? Just a quick question from your um, report, Director. Um, do you know if, if the rail trail has done a, a drone flyby of the trail? I thought they were going to do that about a year ago. We take a helicopter ride along it. I mean, actual drone footage that, you know. Not that I know. I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so but the reason we want to do this right now is because um, there's been questions asked by the Economic Development Corp from Spalatz and is why it's costing so much money. And based on the fact that it's spring and you can see everything, you can go and see into the bush and whatever, it's the time to take that trip. And, uh, and they're willing to do this, but we just haven't been able to coordinate the time. Go ahead, Gordon. Yeah, just going to ask, and, uh, Jeff, and, you know, the, the funding was approved to start on their rail trail from here to however far they get with the money. Yeah. What, when are they going to start? You know, it's like it's. They never said anything at the last meeting about a start date for it. They just said they're going to start on it. So what day that is. But according to Double D, they could do it in about three days. Mm -hmm. if they just hired them, paid by the hour. Wouldn't cost $750,000. I'm just wondering when they're going to start. Wait, are there any um, people that might have their hands up that are online right now? Uh, an opportunity. Nope. If any members online wish to address council, please raise your hand. I'm not seeing any hands. All right, we'll move on. Jeff, go ahead. I just want to add, I forgot about it. I, I did have a meeting with uh, Graham Go, who is the Splats and Development Corporation director. But I did discuss with him uh, the forest. He is working on it through the Bill 28. Um, that he's, I heard a rumor that he was going to try and split up Ender B and Sycamus, but he said that was not his intention. He was going to, as the proposal was back originally, where the three of us are a partner for the community forest. So, um, He's been working with a couple different ministries, and, and he's been working with Greg Kylo, and uh, I don't remember the name, but from the Vernon area, the Liberal MP. Yeah, yeah. So with with an NDP, NDP. No, she's, isn't she Liberal? No, she's NDP. Okay. Yeah. So he's he's been in conversation with them, as we said. Indigenous has to carry the 
big stick to the table. It's not not the not us, the local government. So I was happy to hear him say that it was near the top of his list of things to deal with. All right. Uh, anything else on the strategic priorities? Hearing none, we'll move on. We've got lots more to go get through this. Week. Okay, development permit number 21233 DP and development variance permit number 21233 DVP. This is on 1201 Shoe Shop Avenue. Scott, would you give us a report before we go to the resolution? I can. So this is an application for a de development permit and a development variance permit. Um, I think today it might uh, be better to just consider development variance permit, not the development permit. Um, so for the after dark distillery and uh, Dean is, uh, is on the line if, uh, if you have any questions. Here's the property. Uh, everybody's pre pretty familiar with, with it. Used to the bowling alley at 1201 uh, Shoe Shop Street. It's now the After Dark Distillery. And there's two properties. You can see the whole line between the, the two properties. Uh, it's in the town center develop um, fish community plan. Uh, it's designated as town center. And then it, the zoning is C1, which is town center commercial. Um, here we have a, a drawing of what it, the um, development will look like. So the development permit usually uh, considers um, form and character, landscaping, parking, those types of things. Um, the, the owner, uh, Dean, has provided a description, but he is working on getting some drawings showing what that's going to look like. And he's also working on the landscaping. So um, I thought it would be better. We had a meeting with him. Probably better to wait, and uh, council can really see what's going to happen there. Um, but would like to move forward with the development variance permit. So you can see with the the property because it's two properties, the, the building and the new building would straddle the property line. So um, he's looking to essentially um, double the, the footprint of the building and then build a second floor residence. Um, so he would expand his um, his business and then have a residence above. But because the property straddles the, the property line, he'd need a, a variance, a zero setback variance um, for both properties. And then um, he also requires a variance from 1.2, from two meters to 1.27 meters in the, the one corner. He, um, he is working towards having that property line um, erased. So it would be a consolidation. It's a kind of tabletop exercise the a surveyor can do. So he's working towards that. But um, right now, um, just to move forward just a, a little bit, we'd like to, to get uh, this variance out of the way. Um, here you can see the, the drawing of uh, or a photo of the building. Um, <clears throat> so there's the, the building is actually designed to be expanded out that north side. So there's, there's actually um, you know, a, a wall that's wood and they just pull out that wall, build the new frame, it's going to use tip up concrete, you know, have a, a two story addition. Um, but um, so I'm recommending that council only consider the um, the development variance permit today, and then Dean's working on getting us some more information for the the development permit. Um, did uh, send this out so uh, neighbors within 15 meters are notified. <clears throat> we referred it internally, um, and yeah, there were no uh, no concerns from uh, any of our departments from any of the public. So the recommendation here includes the development permit, but um, I'm recommending that uh, we only get the development variance permit. So um, it's up for council to make decision. And again, Dean's on the line if council has any questions for him. Comments or questions? Councilor Anderson and Councilor Moments. Hi, Dean. It's Colleen. Um, I, I just have a question. I'm I'm happy about the uh, expansion. Is it going to be manufacturing on the bottom or more storefront? Can you hear me? Yes. I can now. Okay. So we're not changing <coughs> here, but we're just going to expand the storefront a bit, like in the front. It will be lined up with where the front is now, like, like the store. And then, and the rest of it on the bottom is pretty much warehouse. And then, so we're, we're like we're not moving any equipment or nothing like that. Everything that's here stays where it is. No, that's excellent. Good. Thank you, Councilor Mollis. Yeah, this came to the Planning and Development Committee two weeks ago, and uh, we 
we endorsed it. So uh, I was, uh, just my question would be is, there is a development permit to a three variant. So is that the only one we're gonna vote on on B? Is that what you're asking for? Just to vote on B because? Yeah, that, that's right. So the, the recommendation now has one resolution considering the development permit and the development variance permit. And um, yeah, we're recommending today to only consider the development variance permit because there is more information coming on the development permit. So that would be C. Um, development variance application. So you've got, this has got three things in it. That's why it's confused because you got the two put together on the first one. Then you got the development permit as the second one and then C is just the, so this, so this is 11A. But 11, well, that's partial, sorry. Go ahead, Bob. Thanks, I, I'm prepared to make a motion that we accept this recommendation for the development of commercial edition. Okay, well, the recommendation will be coming forward. So, Jeff, do you still have concerns about this recommendation? We're just voting on the variance, not on the development. It's not the development and it's just the variance permit. So you that the district of Sigma was authorized and issued development permit number 21-233 DP. Um, no, so from what I understand, we wouldn't, it would take that part out and it would just go with that um, district of okay, I see. authorized and issue the development variance permit and the rest we could read out. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. A, a couple questions. Uh, one to the applicant and maybe through the chair to Scott. So the first question is, you just asked us to break it out into just a, a variance request, this application for this evening, but the variance would include a new building that we're not issuing a, a development permit for yet. So that, I mean, you're the boss and it's your gig, but that doesn't make sense to me. We're, you're, you're taking out the development permit and just asking for the variance, but the variance includes the new building that we haven't issued a permit for yet. <laughs> so that's one thing. And my, my second question is to the applicant, if you're introducing more uh, retail space as, as well as some storage, I guess, like you said, you're creating more employment and uh, in our official community plan, we're kind of looking for uh, businesses on main street to, uh, a business in the bottom end and accommodation on top. So is there any allowances for if you're in adding new employees, which is great. The district loves to see that. Uh, I encourage this, by the way, 100%. I'm just asking the question though. Um, are you going to have an issue for finding um, accommodations for any new employment that you might be creating? Or are you going to accommodate your new employees in as part of the development permit? The, well, the, the accommodations will be for us. For it'll either be, it'll be for us as a, like as the owners, mm -hmm. and we still hire local. We just hired people today again. <laughs> and my second question is gone. It, like it's not creating any more work than what we're doing right now. We're just having room for more storage so we can keep everything inside the buildings. No, I, I love what you've done so far. So thank you. My second question was through the like church. We don't want anything sitting outside. We want everything inside. All there is going, all all you're going to see here is a building. Be nice and tidy. Like it always is. Well, it's supposed to be. <laughs> so I guess to answer Councillor Camp's question, um, the so the development development permit's always going to be required. Um, and in this case, the, the variance is going to be required. Um, we've been working with, with Dean on this and, and he wants some assurance going forward as he's coming up with his design and things. So I think moving forward to the development variance permit will help him get a little bit further. And then I think just the, 
the information we have right now is lacking on the development permit, the form and character of it, and what the parking and the landscaping is going to look like. So I, I wouldn't feel really comfortable recommending the development permit without getting that information. Um, we did the advertising and, and things for the variance permit. So um, a council can always choose not to go forward with the, the variance permit. I think there's absolutely no risk in issuing the development permit. But uh, but yeah, I think just keep it moving forward one step at a time. Thank you. So we got this reconstructed then that the district is that the district authorized and issue a development variance permit number 21233 DVP to very sick zoning bylaw number 101 1993 section 4012 C to set for the existing building and addition and section 4012C2 setback for the commercial addition for one and two district lot 452 <coughs> Hill district plan 23105. I need a mover, Councillor Malmus. I need a seconder, Councillor Bushel. Any more comments on this? Clear? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Carried, thanks, Scott. All right. Development permit number 21343 DVP DV and development variance permit 21343 DVP 1202 Young Crescent. Before I read the recommendation, Scott, would you give us a. And thank you. This is an application for a development permit and a development variance permit down at 1202 Young, uh, Young Crescent. Um, and it's for upgrades to a marina. Here's an ortho photo of the, the, uh, the lease area. So it's adjacent to that 1202 Young Crescent. Um, you can see it um, right now, there's a, a dock and a boathouse and um, they'd like to upgrade the, the dock. Their lease is up. So uh, the problem requires them to bring everything into compliance. So that requires a dock upgrade. And they'll also have to remove the, the boathouse. Um, the present location of the dock, as you can see, it's right along the, the lease area, but they will need a variance for um, for that. We, you know, the in theory, the the parcel lines extend out into the water. Um, uh, you know, creating that boundary of the lease area, and then there's the western boundary of the lease area that requires setbacks as well. Um, so it's in the channel development permit area, <clears throat> and it's in the S2 marine zone. Here's a, a drawing um, prepared by Riverside Docks on uh, what it's going to look like. Um, I guess the main things they're doing is they, they now have to do the, the flow through um, decking where it allows the light to penetrate. And then uh, also uh, they have to maintain one and a half meters above the, the, the floor of the lake so the docks don't ground. Um, but this one came to the uh, Planning and Development Committee twice. Um, the owner's been um, working pretty hard with the province and Michael O'Reilly, he's the agent for the owner. He's, he's on, on the line. Um, and the one key thing was when we talked about it at the planning development committee, it was the, the that zero setback. Um, so there's the, the public uh, public dock and the, the public space and the zero setback from that space. And it will limit what can occur on the public space. If you moved it into the middle, it would then affect like a domino, right? Everybody else, every other marina going north. Um, but the and we were looking for a solution, um, but the biggest issue was the piles. So the existing piles, where they are in their location, um, that that dictates where the dock can go. But to move those piles would be incredibly expensive, and probably the biggest expense would be um, the disturbance of the the floor of the lake because there's archaeological impacts there. Um, that's a, there's cultural and, and archaeological artifacts along the whole channel. Um, so moving those would be very difficult. Um, so yeah, staff did bring it back to Planning and Development Committee and uh, the committee did recommend going forward. Um, so basically they'll have to um, yeah, create that one and a half meter um, elevation above the, the bed of the lake at all times. They have to do the flow through decking and then one of their requirements is they remove the the, the boathouse um michelle hills uh environmentalist who did so the uh, it's called the section 11 permit <clears throat> so that's what's required to get this through the provincial process um and they require um the 
you know, to meet the zoning bylaws. So that's where the development variance permit and the, the development permit come in. Um, yeah, so here's the, the variances. Um, so varying the setback from the, the south uh, lease boundary from five meters to zero meters, from the west boundary from five meters to 0 0.5 meters, and then also varying the maximum lease area. So bylaw right now says you can only have 50%, the lease area can only be 50% of the size of the upland parcel. And in this case, the lease area is 130% of the upland parcel. So we'd have to vary that as well. Um, so this is, yeah, an existing lease that, uh, that they'd like to maintain. Um, sent us out for referrals um, and we would have notified all the, the property owners within 30 meters. We didn't hear anything back and uh, yo, no, uh, no concerns coming from the referrals. All right, thank you. Councilor Malmus, have you got any comments? No, this again came to the fact <laughs> we had to come back twice because we had other questions. And so in the end, we, we approved it, so. Councilor McKay. Yeah, it's, it's tight in the, thank you. It, it's tight in the channel there. And uh, I, you know, I, I understand the applicant's reasons why, but, um, we have a road allowance just adjacent to just the south of uh, what he's asking for a variance from five meters to zero meters. We don't even have a conceptual drawing of uh, what our tenure in the water is going to need to be to uh, have a pedestrian bridge across the channel. Um, I, I'm not gonna vote in favor of the variance. Uh, the development permit, yes, but not with the variance. I, I don't support the variance going from five meters to zero in the south because it leaves zero for public space in our tenure. And we don't know how much we're going to need. I understand and heard what Scott said about if they don't have a zero uh, variance there, then I have to put in new piles and it's culturally sensitive. I, I recognize that and I'm sensitive to that, but there has to be a way to do that. Um, so, and, and, and to stick the, the dock further out in a channel by removing that variance from five meters to zero, I don't think we need structures sticking further out in the channel either. <coughs> and again, I support the marina business. We're a, we're a water resort community, don't get me wrong. I support this permit, but not those two variances. Council Bushel. Yes, excuse me, Chair. Um, Malcolm, I respect all those uh, things you mentioned, but I, I, you know, this is a very unusual piece of property. Yeah, all the properties on the channel are like 100 feet wide. This property is 60 feet wide. His neighbor to the north is encroaching on zero setback, so he can't go that way. He really has to, and uh, he really has to stay where he is. First Nations uh, has approved where it's located and the support not disturbing the bottom of the uh, channel. And we do have a lot of room on our road allowance for a pedestrian bridge. Uh, we have a lot of room for a car bridge and it was fine before. So I, I do support this. I know Michael's gone uh, really hard to try to get this firm through. Uh, Don Chamberlain, the owner of the property is a very uh, good uh, community um, uh, citizen who supported this community with the improvements at the, uh, uh, the end of Main Street there. Uh, financially, and, uh, he's a great corporate citizen for the community. He's donated the uh, the uh, building there to the uh, search and rescue, which is a huge uh, asset for their search and rescue. And I just, I really support this uh, uh, this application because of the size of the property. Okay, thank you, Councilor Mons. Uh, through the chair, uh, everything Bell says is correct. I was opposed to it, but he. His existing dock is exactly where he's asking for variance. The, the existing one is exactly in the same place. He's zero from the other one. So if you go down there and look, what he's putting in will be exactly the same footprint. So it won't change. My concern was just like you said, if we come into the district of Sycamore and we want to use ours, but we did have a conversation with them about possibly being allowed to use our side of that dock. So they're willing to work with us on, on any of it. So I support this because basically it's going back exactly 
where it is. And First Nation said that was the only way that they would allow it. All right, I'm going to call. I'm going to read a. Go ahead. Uh, thanks to the chair. Um, after staying to the planning meetings, um, did I recall that um, there is a provision for no parking on the the south side of that dock by the by the owner, as it could uh, inhibit access on our side? And also, signage might be good for the traveling public as well, so they don't hook up to a private dock. <laughs> it would apply to everybody. Would you? <laughs> Part of our discussion was allowing the uh, rescue boat and the fire boat be moored there. We actually discussed the idea of moving that building around the other side for our use, but that would definitely interfere with the pedestrian bridge yeah. and some other things. And it's a sensitive area, both uh, environmentally and First Nations. So. I don't know where they're going to go with that building. Not our issue. All right, I'll read the resolution. Um, recommendation that the District of Sikamus authorize and issue development permit number 21-343 DP for the property legally described as Porsche or lease number 333848 adjacent to the upland property legally described as lot one. District Lot 452, Kalmuk's Division, Yale District Plan, KP78354, located at 1202 Young Street, Young Crescent, for upgrades to the existing marina and issue development variance permit number 21343 DVP for very, to vary the minimum lot line setback and maximum lot area in support of the lease renewal. I need a mover. Yes. Evans counts for Malmas. Any more discussion on this before I call a question? Okay, hearing none, I call a question. All those in favor? Okay, opposed. Councilor McCabe is opposed. The rest is carried. If I could just state my reason. Go ahead. Um, I support the applicant and I support the tourism business in, in Sycamuse. And I understand the impact by me voting no, but just because it's there, that doesn't mean it should stay there. You have to start doing some house cleaning somewhere. And uh, yeah, it's passed anyhow, so. Yeah. All right. Is that recorded? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, let's move on. All right, development variance permit application number 22044 DVP 711 Parksville Street. Scott, would you uh, like to uh, give us a, the detailed report on this as well? And thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this is uh, an application for a development variance permit and it looks to vary two things. One is the rear setbacks on a number of lots and then the front setback on, uh, on a lot. Um, in the, the Parkfield development, <clears throat> here's a pretty new, while well, the, the ortho photo is, might be a little bit old, but the, the plan, you can see how the, the lots are coming out. Uh, on the on the property uh, due to the recent subdivision, uh, the property is uh, designated residential loaded residential low density in the fish community plan and R1A urban residential, which is a zone unique to this property. Um, so the variance there's as they um, started, uh, we started getting building permits for these properties. Um, they were having some challenges on getting the, the units to fit on the properties. Um, we did issue one building permit for 728 or lot 40, which is the one with the arrow pointing at it. And we asked them to have it surveyed after the foundation was in. Uh, we realized that uh, it was going to be too close to the, the front property line. Um, and then with the other applications, they were at, they're asking for um, the setback to reduce, be reduced from six meters to five meters. Um, they did come to the Planning and Development Committee a couple times, and um, they are going through a, a bylaw amendment to change that rear setback from six meters to five, five meters. Um, but these are the, the properties that they, they already have permits all ready to go, and they really want to get started on them. This process is a little bit faster than the, the zoning bylaw amendment, and they still haven't got all the ducks in a row necessarily on the zoning bylaw amendment. 
So we thought the, the variance was the, the best way to get some of this stuff done. Um, council already issued one variance permit for 1125 Willow Row. Um, that was another one where they put the foundation in and then realized it was too close to the property line. They did manage to get one right in 1131. So they did get a permit issued for that one and got managed to get the building in the right space on the lot. So I guess they're one for six. Um, we did send this out for uh, comments from uh, from neighbors within 50 meters. We haven't heard anything back. Planning Development Committee um, recommended uh, approval. Uh, Planning Development Committee worked pretty hard with the owner to, to get them to this point. Um, engineering technologists had no objection. However, there is a sewer line on the back of some of those properties. So we'll have to take some measures to ensure that that's protected. That's, there's a, a trail over top of that. And then uh, the fire department, they still strongly recommend it. Um, Brett's been held his line pretty hard where he doesn't want to see any variances just uh, with the size of lots and, uh, and getting fire equipment back there. Um, staff's recommending that it, uh, it be approved. Your parcel line, it's we're probably a, a zoning bylaw amendment. Um, and with the size of the properties, it, it probably makes sense to get, uh, get the units that they're for. And then of course the other variance um, for the front setback is uh, you know, the building's already there. We thought this was just more of a housekeeping. Councilor Wallace. Well, this came to council a couple times, uh, or to council, to uh, the Planning Development Committee. And they were asking for a lot of variances and we only allowed the front and the back. And we suggested that the properties be the setbacks match up with our new zoning bylaw, which was, has been approved yet. So if we're going to have a zoning bylaw that says this is what you're allowed to do, they get a portion built, we pass the zoning bylaw, it would alter the, the front and the back, would look different in side-by-side -side units. So <clears throat> we just had a match up to our existing new zoning bylaw, which hasn't been passed. All right, any other comments? Go ahead, Councilor McKinney. So, I, I have to express my personal views here. Sometimes I don't like it when everything's lumped together, like that last, you know, when you got a variance permit and a development permit, and, you know, and uh, you like one section of it, but not the other, but you have to think of it as a whole. I wish we could have them isolated to their individual ones so we could look at them individually um, on, on this one. So, they're asking for six lots to have a, correct me, uh, help me understand, I should say, I threw the chair to Scott. Asking for six lots to be changed from a six meter setback to a five meter setback, is that correct? Correct. And that's not to adjust the buildings on that lot, that's to put bigger buildings on the lot. Correct. <laughs> But yet we are going to adopt a bylaw down the road that allows a setback of five meters that we're, is that correct? So we're going to present you a bylaw that you can choose to adopt. Does that include lots of this size? I mean, lots are 0.17 of an acre, I believe. I mean, they're already pretty small. You can't park your car in front of your garage or your truck, I should say, in front of your garage with, without sticking out on the street. Now, I understand this is a strata and it's not a public road, but there's still form and character that we have to have in our community. Um, so I'm gonna have to vote against this one too, because <clears throat> the developer knows the lot size. He should be putting buildings on there that fit on those lots instead of trying to put bigger buildings on there just to make money at the cost of form and character and functionality of the subdivision in my have already got rid of no sidewalks so they can put bigger buildings on there. Um, yeah, my opinion. All right, Jeff. Who's the chair? Um, in the new zoning bylaws, we're just matching up to what it is. We did this in, in uh, I can't remember what it's called. South Hamlock? South Hamlock. We blanket changed 
because it was the way it was set up, it just didn't make sense. You have to realize that these people are building right for the long line because the land price has gone up and up and up. And if you want houses in the community that people are coming here and live here and made to participate in the community, they plan on filling it up. And I actually thought that this variance was for all the lots that are not just the city. Right. So the the bylaw amendment will cover all the rest of the lots. So these are the for the ones that they actually have building permits pending for. Right. <clears throat> but at our meeting, we in the planning development, we recommended that we did it to them all now. Because how far away are we with that zoning bylaw? We still have to have a open house, maybe two. We still has to come here. Still, like, so are they are they only six in this year? So the the thing with the vary, if you vary them all, then you have to add that to the title. And already there's enough on these titles that anytime these lots are selling, they're wanting everything removed from the title. So I think it will just be cleaner moving forward to have these variances on the lots they need. And we've been, you know, this is one of the rare things where the developer is not pushing us to get this done. The, it's the realtor and the people buying them that are all like, hey, get these done. And the staff is like dragging the developer, kicking and screaming to, to apply for these things. Um, and, you know, I think right now, the cleanest and best way to do it is to vary as few of them as possible and, and look for the zoning bylaw amendment to kind of clean up those other problems. Okay, okay. I, I understand that. Like I said, I thought what we did the meeting was like, but six is fine if that's all we're doing. You okay with this? Uh, that's good. All right, I'm going to read the recommendation. Recommendation that the District of Sycamus authorize and issue development variant permit number 22044 DVP to vary Sycamus zoning bylaw number 101 1993 section 6042C2 to reduce the rear setback for a single family dwelling for strata lots 11, 15, 39, 40, 41, and 47, district lot 497, Camel Division. Dale District Strata Plan EPS 822 and further that the District of Sikkim was authorized to issue development variant permit number 22-044 DVP to vary Sikkim with zoning bylaw number 101-1993 section 604-C1I front setback from four millimeters to 3.95 millimeters for a single family dwelling for strata lot 40 district lot 497 Campbell's division Yale district strata plan EPS 822 and need a move by Councilor Mama second <clears throat> Evans any more comments on this camera call go ahead Jeff I'd like you just to correct that it's not four millimeters to 3.95 millimeters it's meters you said millimeters did I yeah. okay sorry I know. Clarif clarification made by Councillor Malmas. All right, I'm gonna call the question on the uh, resolution. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, Councillor Aries and Councillor McCabe is opposed. But the resolution is <clears throat> carried. All right. Oh, yes. All right, <laughs> Royal Canadian Legion branch number 99, getting tired. Liquor license, outdoor patio area application. You can move it as uh, presented if you'd like. Okay, there's a recommendation. Um, Scott, you want to comment on? And thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the um, Legion has a patio that uh, that they had put in in 2020 um, and uh, they'd like to make it permanent so they an application to the liquor control branch and uh, as part of that um, public notification and um, seeking public comments is required 
and uh, and a, a resolution from council is required. Um, so we treated this one much like we did with uh, the golf course, where uh, we undertook the the consultation. Um, they required the the floor plan to be approved um, by a building official, and uh, so that was done. We notified, we treated like a development variance permit where we notified all the property owners within 50 meters. And uh, they also posted a sign out front, uh, the Legion to notify people. And um, basically it's for a 48 um, seat patio that's a thousand square meters in size. And uh, the idea would be we send a resolution to the liquor control branch saying we solicited neighbors and we considered this and, uh, and the council supports it. All right. All right, so uh, the recommendation as presented, I need a mover on this because it's long and windy. Councillor Bushel, seconded by Councillor Thomas. Any comments on this? I'm gonna call a question, all those in favor? Carried, thank you. All right, election cost sharing agreements, school district number 83. Recommendation that the mayor and corporate officer be authorized to execute the election cost sharing agreement with school district number 83 North Okanagan Shushwap presented this 13th day of April 2022. I need a mover. Councillor Evans, Councillor Aries. All right, comments or questions on this? Pretty straightforward. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Sycamore's Curling Club, recommendation that the council approve a reduction of the propane charges to the Sycamore's Curling Club for the 2021-2022 season by 50% and direct the community <laughs> service manager to renegotiate the lease with the club for the curling facilities before the 2022-23 season. I need a mover on this, Councillor Aries, Councillor Malmas, uh, so, Jason, I'll get to a report. Councillor McCabe, he left the room because he's in conflict. And uh, Jason, give us a report. Thanks. Thank you, through the chair. Not a lot to say this one. Um, they, they came forward with their presentation last time and sort of outlaid their financial difficulties that they're experiencing right now. Recommendation that's before council is basically based on the fact that for the previous year, um, we stepped in as a district and, and paid the five thousand dollars in, in addition for the for the propane charges for the year. Um, the obviously the cost of propane have gone up significantly this year with the cost of all fuel as well, and they were still being affected throughout the season by COVID and whatnot. So uh, I put forward a recommendation to council to approve a fifty percent reduction, which basically leaves them uh, with that same uh, effective amount five thousand five hundred roughly of uh, of uh, support from the district and the remaining uh, amount for them to pay for themselves. And then the second half of the recommendation. Um, the contract doesn't actually expire until 2023, so asking to get permission to renegotiate ahead of time is to hopefully work out some, something with them to prevent these type of requests from coming in the future, that we can have something in place by the time next season starts that's agreeable to them and to us to move forward um, that's, that's more, well, hopefully more appropriate for the club and for the district um, on a, on a longer-term contract to prevent this type of thing from coming forward in the future. All right, thank you. Comments or questions? Councilor Malmas? Uh, the Curling Club has been around for a long time. Uh, a couple past councils ago, we spent a fortune on that. <laughs> Not that long ago, we spent another fortune on that building, put in the lower thing in bathroom. Then we got hit for the uh, ice making machine. Uh, eighty thousand dollars or whatever it was, and I realized that the Curler Club's been there for a while. But you know, they they had a uh, they had a curling event just a week ago or two weeks ago. Did anybody hear about it? No. It's called Fun Spiel. It was a paid thing to go to. And the curling club made some money, they had their beer gardens open and everything else. I heard about it after. The curling club is not actually being managed correctly. It's like another organization that we have in the community that's not being managed correctly. 
and they have a zero cost. Their membership is supposed to be paying the, the deal on here. So, you know, I was a curler. I curled uh, this year. I, I just didn't have the time to commit to it. Uh, but they need to get some more players in there. Like that should be part of their plan. Uh, a net reduction of this, so it ends up that you know you can pay a hundred dollars for the year, two hundred dollars for the year to curl. Is it per person? Is a little bit. Just saying. so they they have to do some internal management themselves about what what the members are going to pay to use the facility. But but all the taxpayers pay for thirty six people. Sorry. Okay, Councillor Anderson, Councillor Bushell, then Councillor Evans. Um, I agree with Councillor Mamas. I think that they need to, and this is going to be to you, Jason, more than I think that they need to do a serious membership drive. I think that they need to put together a bit of a marketing campaign. I think that they need to figure out what they can do as a club to earn some money, to make some money, and I mean, we joked about it last time we were in here, but sponsor a rock, like, you know, there's lots of things they can do to generate some, some funds, but Jeff's right. Perhaps someone's not, the, the right person's not driving the car. So um, yeah, maybe they need to get together and figure out how to pump some life into, into the facility. Council Bushel. Yeah, I, uh, I think I, I support the curling club. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not a member. Uh, I love I love watching uh, the curling is actually really growing in in uh, in uh, Canada and in the world. They're putting huge buyers on, and I mean, they're, cool, but they're still getting big numbers. And it's just a matter of the right person doing the marketing, and and we should be looking at their financials when we're yet you know, when we're doing their contracts and stuff like that. But I I, I mean, I would like to support them, but I think they really need to. Uh, to take a serious look and come up with a budget and a plan and all that stuff on how to how to make it go get the get it into the school and get the young kids playing and they start to work their way up and watch watch TV and and all these you know briars and everything and it's a great facility I think it's great for community and you make it grow. Councilor Evans, thanks. I I think for future the future generations we need to give them a, a hand up. Um, <laughs> and help them through this. Um, I will vote for that if we will sit down with Jason and Jamie and maybe one of us and come up with a, a new marketing scheme and new uh, and, and suggestions that they would take like raising the membership costs to 250 this year or 225, at least something to, to help them um, move forward because uh, they're gonna have to adapt that in order to survive. But I'd like to support this myself. Jason, uh, where are you going with the curling club right now? And then Contra Malmes. Thank you. Yes, uh, Your Worship. Um, it does. I did sort of indicate in the report as well. We, we have started talking about these things with them about getting, getting involved in the schools, trying to bring the Rocks and Rings program into the schools and getting them involved there, trying to get some junior curling through the rec program because you're right, they don't seem to have the people to do that. So we're gonna sort of step in and assist through that way. So they, they have a, 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 have discussed already about raising rates and uh, <coughs> get amount of grants and things, which I know is not raising money, but it is at least in that direction they haven't done before. So these things have started to be discussed, but you're, you're right, they haven't come to fruition yet. And part of the, the, the agreement process will certainly be that as well. Uh, Jamie and I will be assisting where we can, but yeah, we'll pull anybody in that has a, any ideas and can assist in here. Because ultimate, ultimately, it, you're, you're not wrong. It, it is up to them to do this work. We can assist and give ideas and, and help market and do things along the way. But ultimately, it has to be their board and their group that, that carries this forward as a club. So we, we will be working with them on that for sure. So they talk about in this resolution for the 21-22 season. So does that mean at the end of December that this resolution no, never, no longer takes place and then they start paying for their propane in 1920, in 2023. I mean, I'm looking at the resolution. It's time sensitive. That's your mom, go ahead. They're asking for money for last year. They've got the bills for the propane. For last year. And apparently, well, if I heard you correctly, we've already given it to them. 
No, we we haven't actually invoiced them for the season at this point yet. Um, so, and there's still one. The, 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 amount, the reason there's no exact amount is we're still expecting one invoice for April, and I've estimated where it will roughly come to. But we haven't invoiced them for the season yet, so we could just invoice them for the. Well, you explained that it actually sounded like <clears throat> already. No. Do you know what the number is? Uh, we, we're expecting the number to be approximately eleven thousand three hundred by the end of the year, uh, with, with the total amount. How much? Eleven thousand three hundred dollars for for propane, uh, approximately. Like I said we're missing a bill yet, so that's a bit of a guess. So, so five hundred dollars. Exactly. Okay. So you know, in the community, uh, all these people supply of propane. I mean, they charge where they could get the most, and of course, kind of that's the first one. There's no discount. On. So I know if I get propane through Twin Anchors, they get a superior rate. And I know Todd curls there, Jolie curls there. Uh, you know, may, maybe you could talk to Twin Anchors about the rate that they get being the rate there, which I don't know what that is. Maybe you're getting that already. I have no idea. But yeah, I mean, $10,000 $1, for a team as opposed to eight hundred dollars for a team. That, that those are minor costs to the, like I said, the taxpayer through grants and district funding in the last three years or four years has put close to $500,000 in that building and, and, and the facility. It would be a shame to have it sit empty. We should support it, but we need to, like, they could have bonds, they could advertise for bonds here. Like, they got to do something. Maybe have more bonds feel. Councilor Anderson. Um, I totally support, you know what, this this year and um, the curling um, curling rink because uh, I think it is, it's a, it's a great sport. So I, I will, you know what, if you want some input from me um, on the marketing plan or sure. advertising or some ideas to, I occasionally come up with a good one. So <laughs> thank you. I'll do that. Appreciate it. Go ahead, Jeff. <clears throat> so, what software are you pulling the fifty-six hundred dollars out of Kelly? Um. Well, <laughs> there really is no magical software that this is coming from. So, uh, depends on how much I budgeted for propane for the year. So, probably around eight to ten, uh, maybe five thousand, because we absorb half of it. Oh no, I don't budget for propane. No. You don't. Right. But so there will be uh, an expense there. We'll just absorb it from surplus during the year. So some expenses are higher, some expenses are less. So I'm not adjusting taxes for it. I'm assuming there'll be other expenses and other departments that'll be less. So uh, there's the whatever the mayor's serendipity fund. There's uh, events that we canceled. I don't know if we're all going to all these events again because it was a pile of money that we used to use for stuff like this so in our budget is there any of those funding sources left or they're all in reinstated again because we used to spend thirty or forty thousand dollars on events so right so we have reduced the event budget since two years ago with a best guess of what these are <laughs> like this year so is it higher than what we think? I, I don't know at, at this point. All right, thank you. All right, go ahead, Evan. Well, I'd love to ask this question. I think I know the answer. How much does the CSRD contribute to the current rate? Nothing. So we have people curling from outside sick and moving up into access and subsidize curling $200 a season that we formally asked the CSRD for a contribution. Why don't we just sell, send them a tax record? Requisition for three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. You know, we we the district we all know what we contribute toward the arena, right? Oh, yeah. we contribute over half a million, but we've got a municipal facility supported by curlers from everywhere and in a deficit, and we've never formally asked our neighbor to help contribute toward the operating cost of a regional asset. Maybe we should do that. To charge them uh, for going across the uh, bridge at the U River too. Okay. And I don't know in all seriousness what the arrangement is with other curbing. Like what does the city of San Bernard get? 
but does the city of Revelstoke get the town of Bolden? What is that contribution from the electoral areas that surround those municipalities? Is something worth pursuing to help? You know, there there uh, there is there is a formula in in Golden. You might want to ch check into it as to what the regional district pays for the curling club and 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 I think the um, swimming pool. Yeah, yeah. We'll look into that. Okay, so we've got this resolution on the table. Go ahead, Gordon. Oh, like through the chair, or you could we could dip into Rona's ask Rona for some of her EO yeah. fund from her area, not from the district of Sickles. Yeah, that doesn't work that way. So we could write a letter and see if we can oh, when, request some funding from when we uh, when we uh, access the EOF fund, it's 50-50. Although it's uh, something that we could we could uh, we could request it. Yep. Anyway, but we got this resolution on the table. Okay, it's been it's been moved and seconded. Uh, moved, I think, by Bob and seconded by Ryan. Okay, any more comments on this as to the decision we're going to make here? Okay, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of the resolution? Okay, surprisingly enough, it's carried. Councillor McCabe, you can come back in. We could look on and look at options. Okay, Ukraine refugees, Councillor Evans, you wanted to talk about. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um I appreciate just a, a minute of your time. Last week we talked about uh, um the fact that sometimes when you're looking at something like the Ukrainian refugee crisis, that it's difficult to know where your money's going to go, and um and I I totally agree with that. Um, this week, I found out that uh, the best way to give to the Red Cross would be to give to the Red Cross in Ukraine, um, if, and they can take the money right to the people there. Um, although giving to the Red Canadian Red Cross will help people in Poland feed refugees, which three of my friends just got back from Poland, and they did that for three weeks. They came back quite beat up, emotionally worn out from watching 2,000 people arrive a day on trains to this little border town as a mosque where they would get off with no food and they would feed them and build shelters. Um, but um, so I don't have a plan yet, but I just want to let you know that if anybody would like to help me work on a plan where we could plan as a town, as a district to bring a Ukrainian family here it would likely be either a senior couple um, in their 60s or older that have been displaced, or likely a young single mother with a couple of kids whose husband had to stay behind because if you're between 18 and 60, you can't leave the country, you have to fight. So most of the men are gonna have to stay there. So um, for instance, uh, you need you need a face and a name. There's a little boy named Zahar, he's eight years old. My, uh, my friend's uh, church in Revelstoke is, um, getting money to bring him here to his mom, who's in Revelstoke, her name is Natalia. There's a real example. So that's what we could do as a district here. And um, I know this isn't something that I have an official proposal. I'm not asking council to vote on anything, but if anybody would like to work with me to help make this happen, um, I think our, our town could host one family. And if every town did that, the way Canlis is doing, I think we can make a big difference. So um, talk to me, we can sit down and scheme together and uh, come up with a plan. And uh, I would say if there's anybody out there that's got a big enough lot to put some housing on, maybe we could uh, get together and raise enough for a micro home for uh, like a two bedroom micro home or something to get this, get make this happen. But that's just me thinking out loud that I think that with the heart that this town has, we can make this happen. So I'm done for now. Bunch of questions. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm enough land if the district of Sycamus wants to let someone out of the ALR. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they make it. Ukrainians are very, very good agriculturalists. Yeah. Yeah. Pick early all day. Yeah. Great, Colleen. Well, I'll sit down with you on that. Thank you. All right, Bob, you got some help. I'll help you as well. All right, uh, thanks for that. Uh, moving on, uh, animal control bylaw number 1013. Recommendation that animal control bylaw number 
22 be adopted as presented this 13th day of April, 2022. I need a mover. Councillor Bushell, second by Councillor McCabe. Any comments on this? Call the question, all in favor? Carried, thank you. All right, uh, 2022 financial plan number 10, 18, 2022 for adoption recommendation of the district of Sycamore financial plan 2022 to 2026 bylaw number 1018 2022 be adopted as presented this 13th day of April 2022. I need a mover. Councillor Aries, Councillor Malmus, any questions on this? Call the question all in favor. Carried, thank you. Fees and charges amending bylaw number 1016, 2022. Recommendation that the third reading of fees and charges amending bylaw number 1016, 2022, given <coughs> on March 9th, 2022, be rescinded and further that fees and charges amending bylaw number 1016, 2022, be amended at second reading as presented this 13th day of April, 2022, and further that the fees and charges amending bylaw number 1016, 2022 be given third reading as presented the 13th day of April, 2022. Um, I need a mover on this. Councillor Bushel, Councillor Malmas, Jason, give us a quick report on this and then we'll move on. Thank you to the chair. Um, basically this is the same, um, same report that was presented back for, before um, with one exception, um, council asked for the addition of a charge for the wash car to be brought outside the, the sickness boundaries. So we've added that with a $2,000 per day uh, minimum rental outside the boundaries uh, uh, and uh, a damage deposit of $5,000. The difference in the in the fees is obviously because when it's within the boundary districts, our own uh, public work staff is taking care of, the, uh, of it and watching it. And when we send it out there, we're taking more risk. So uh, hence the much larger damage deposit and, and the increased cost for putting it out. Okay, I'll your question. Go ahead, Bob. Thank you. In in saying um, these new fees to protect our, our resource, when it's being used by someone out there, does that mean somebody outside, does the policy state it's people that are outside the District of Sigmus or is that um, for somebody like the Monashi Music Festival as well? No, that would be within the district. So, so they would pay the inside the district fees. It would be when we set it outside the district boundaries is when the other fees will, will, will come into play. <clears throat> so, so if some, if I may, yeah, go ahead. so for um, something like a music festival in town, how much less is it? Um, they, they would pay the, the, the $1,000 per day um, for, for the rental of, of it during, yeah. during the time. And we would provide the, the setup for that. So that's included in that. Whereas if, if it was outside the boundary, it would be a $2,000 per day charge. And, and what's the deposit, Jason? Uh, the deposit is $2,000 within the boundaries. In the boundaries, thank you. Uh, just a question in regards to this stage and uh, how much money have we incorporated over a period of time since we've had that stage? I just, I, I can ask Kelly that maybe at a later date, but uh, uh, we paid X number of dollars for it. I wonder whether or not it's uh, actually paying for itself along the way. I see where you're going with this, so I, I like it. So it gives a sense of responsibility when they take on this stage now. We didn't have that in the past, but we did we did swap. So there was a benefit to that. Anyway, um, any more comments or questions on this at this page? I'm gonna call the question on the resolution. All those in favor? Very, thank you. <clears throat> All right, election and assent voting amending bylaw number 1017 2022. Recommendation that the election and assent amending bylaw number 1017 2022 be given first, second, and third reading this 23rd day of March. I need a mover on this. Councillor Anderson, Councillor Bushell. Jen, you want to comment on this? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be brief. As Councillor calls in early March, um, I floated the idea of mail ballot voting and just asked Council not to make any decision, but just think about it. Uh, time has come the, um, to decide. So I prepared a bylaw. Uh, honestly, administratively, it does not look onerous. Um, the biggest question I have is how popular will it be? I need to, do I prepare 50 packages? Do I prepare 250 packages? I'm not sure. So um, on my end, I think I'll do some just 
uh, feedback uh, with the community in the meantime, just to see, have them, you know, show interest at this time. And then uh, if council wishes to proceed with this, um, registration for mail ballot uh, packages would be starting in August. Is there any questions about the process, council? No, go ahead, council. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't I totally read it. I read it a bit. <laughs> um, it might help our seniors, like, who have mobility issues, like they're not, <coughs> not snowbirds, they're just two blocks away, but they have trouble getting here. So would they be eligible to mail in? Absolutely. Any uh, legislation was updated in 2021 that any elector may choose to, if we offer it by bylaw, if we have the bylaw in place, that anybody could do it. They don't need to give a reason. I'm hoping it's actually the convenience of it would improve our voter turnout. Yeah. And so that that would in, include somebody, a uh, snowbird, say from Yuma, could Absolutely. mail in a ballot to. And do you feel comfortable? You have a, a process of uh, avoiding duplication and legitimizing ballots? The onus absolutely is on me, whether they're voting in person or by mail, to ensure that I'm satisfied to their identity and that they haven't voted. They also sign a declaration, and whether they voted by mail or in person, they can be challenged. Um, and so the list, if you register, it's on a list that is available for public inspection as well. So anybody can come and view that list, and if they want to challenge anybody that's put their name for a mail ballot package, uh, that, that would be up for challenge. Um, but the, I, I bear that to make sure that um, I'm satisfied that they're they're eligible to vote. Thank you. I think it's the new norm. All right, anything else? I think so. Mm -hmm. All right, call a question. All those in favor? Yeah. All right, tax rates, bylaw number 1022, 2022, first, second, and third reading recommendation at the districts of Sycamore's tax rates, bylaw number 1022. 2022 be given first, second, and third reading as presented this 13th day of April 2022. I need a mover. Councillor Malmas, second by Councillor Evans. Any comments or questions on this? I'm going to call the question then. All those in favor? I didn't even have to move or have to ask you to. <coughs> <laughs> Kelly's getting, <laughs> getting up. Yeah, right right here. near the end of the meeting. I'm working the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Not snoozing. <laughs> right, Beach Park wheelchair access uh, for discussion. Um, there's been a letter here uh, from uh, CA Johnson in regards to wheelchair access. Does anybody want to? Uh, anyone who want to? Comment on this, Mr. Evans, go ahead. I was, if I may, through the chair um, to Daryl, um, I would assume Daryl, we'd have to come up with um, some kind of plan and research on the angle that it would take to put in a some kind of ramp that would involve quite a bit of digging and some uh, finding the right grade, I guess. Is that what you call it, Malcolm? Or the right grade to go down? To, uh, is, is that something that we could start to explore? Through the chair, I, I could look into it a little bit closer. Um, I mean, a couple things come to mind. 13 degrees sounds good to me if we wanted to paint the line on the boat launch and get somebody wet, but um, getting close to our beach with the water that goes up 12 feet or 15 feet and down again, I, I'm not sure what that would look like to get a ramp out there that would be... <laughs> I've heard, I, I just read the letter this morning and somebody had commented that Salmon Arm tried to do this and it when they first built it, it, it worked fairly well. I'd like to go down and see what they've done, but I guess it just falls apart during the year and it's not even usable. So I'd have to look into it a little closer and see what we could do. Um, yeah, obviously we don't want to invite it on a boat launch, but that's the kind of idea we'd need to you need to think of something like that. It'd be good if we could figure this out because I mean, we've spent a lot of money on Beach Park and and uh, this is a component that would be, I think something that we have to try to figure it out, but it uh, could be complicated. Anyway, Councillor Malmas and then Councillor <laughs> Anderson. Okay, wheelchair accessibility is like one or 2% slow. Yeah, if I could, uh... Well, on the accessibility ban out there, I don't think it's above 3% max. Okay, so I'm just thinking I slipped you know, a little 
butter off my bumper on my hand. I'm holding on the back of the wheelchair. It slides away. It's 13 degrees. The guy's halfway across the channel before I get to him. Who's paying for that? Who's, who's going to be liable? So, and I know the thing that you're talking about, Daryl Savin Army ads. Basically, what they tried to do was the same thing that they have at some of them muddy hills in Alberta where they have a rope go around the wheel and the guy kind of hangs on it and drag him up and down. Um, not a real good functioning, no safety factor to it. Like I said, if he slips, he's gone. I wasn't sure if he was talking about access through the boat lodge or access past the blocks on our beach get out to the beach but most of those wheelchairs don't have wheels on them that are going to work really good at a sandy beach so and i'd like to know a little bit more about what he's actually trying to do and because you know i could see you doing it in Kelowna or Vernon because that lake level is fluctuates only three and a half feet so it's fairly easy to put a launch in with a gradual slope, you know, like the kiddies pool or something, but our lake, 17 feet is, is a long way. Mm -hmm. Culture Anderson. No. Um, I would be, yeah. I'd like to check on liability issues as well. Like I no responsibility that I don't know the cost of that or the burden to sycamores would be if something did happen. So I think that's something that we should check into. Councillor Bushel and Councillor McCabe. Yeah, I think uh, Daryl look into it. It's, I mean, um, it's something all the communities are, are, are doing. And uh, I mean, we wouldn't be the first person to do this or first community to do this. I mean, it's probably done in millions of other communities in the world. So we just do some homework on it and uh, write a letter back to him and you know, maybe get his opinion or get his ideas. And in the meantime, we can follow up on our municipal insurance and uh, and come up with a plan. I mean, we have a budget for it this year, but we can always work on it. And I think it's very, we have to, you know, include the, include all the all, all people. Back uh, about five or six years ago, a presentation by Rick Hansen at UBCM in regards to how little wheelchair access there is and uh, their movement towards trying to accommodate that. So I remember, remember that particular presentation and uh, and I don't know I mean I don't know how many people we got in wheelchairs and sycamores but if there's some research we can do and maybe try to make it work I, I would try to recommend that as well but Councilor McCabe you're up. Yeah our, our official community thank you our official community plan has the uh, universal accessibility uh, universal design um, and we speak to accessibility for everybody we don't have the tax bases like like Kelowna does say to accommodate that or or but I, I think as far as like Councillor uh, Bush will say it wouldn't cost a lot of money to look at best practices around the world to see what that looks like how that would be applied in Sycamus and, and, and put a, a windshield cost estimate to that if it even looks feasible after your um, best practices review sort of thing. So I, I think it's worth looking into, but we have to be cognizant of how much, how much it would be utilized as opposed to, you know, a business case, basically, does it cost warrant the use or does it use warrant the cost, I mean, sort of thing. But it, for sure, uh, we should at least look at best practices, see what the percent grade is or the incline, see if we can apply it to a, a, a water body like ours that fluctuates like Councillor Mama says so much. It might not be feasible, but it's worth at least looking into it and fleshing it out. No pun intended. Yeah, so uh, we did support um, wheelchair access at Legion. I think um, at the same time there was, a, um, I think we supported a, a, a wheelchair access at uh, I think the pharmacy put one in and there's, a, yeah, we could, so there's, there's certain areas where we have supported this and I'm not so sure uh, there was grant money available at that particular time when we did this. So maybe that's something we can look into as well. Councilman Malmes. The Legion doesn't move up and down. 
neither does the pharmacy. They're pretty much fixed. Well, the one upstairs is uh, moves up and down. And I know, but the building doesn't move up and down. It does, the slope doesn't change. Okay. So, I mean, for example, Old Town Bay. If we tried to get the minimal slope that we could get at Old Town Bay on that ramp on there, yeah. it's 38 degrees at low water. It's getting lesser now. It ends up level. And it's 65 feet long. So if you want to get to a wheelchair accessible percentage, of even go with five degrees. Your ramp for the accessibility is going to be, I'm just going to guess at 600 or 700 feet. That's not that doable. Just say it then. Maybe it's not doable, but maybe, but check but into it is doable. Go ahead. Yeah, we have done um, wheelchair accessibility. We've helped with the Legion. We've helped with the, the with the pharmacy, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I pushed uh, Interior Health to do it at the at the blood clinic. So they have a push button there too now. So we're working towards that. But if if you if you look at a couple of houses in town that have wheelchair accessibility that only has two steps, it's a ramp and then a ramp. You know, just for two steps, like you know, 30 feet, 30 feet sort of thing. So like Councillor Mama said, but but still, uh, we shouldn't stop it. No, we should at least investigate. Yeah, we should bet. I'm just, I just want to throw it out there that the rationale to, and you know, if you go to Alberta or any other lake except this body of water, this body of water is 17 feet. Kamloops Lake is 32 feet. No water to high water. So if you wanted to put a, wheelchair accessible in there, you're basically going to have to cross the lake to get it that's got the <laughs> slope on it. So is there a way to do it? There might be a way to do it. But the thing they had in Salmon Arm, like it was problematic. And I've seen those things where so rope go around. So you kind of on it on the way down and you're hanging on to it on the way up. I'm just thinking that that's probably not the best system. And yes, somewhere in the world, there probably is a good thing, but I can't off the top of my head think of very many bodies of water that have the lake level fluctuation that we have, so. All right, okay, so uh, we'll move on. Uh, it was well discussed. Okay, uh, correspondence from BC Timber Sales. Recommendation that the staff be directed to coordinate a site visit with BC Timber Sales and further that the BC Timber Sales be invited as a delegation to discuss concerns related to the post wildfire sal salvaging. I need a mover on this, Councillor Malmas, seconded by Councillor Bushel. I don't know. Um, we got anybody that would like to discuss this or is it just straightforward? I think that it's just a matter of, of seeing and inviting them to Come the delegation. Go ahead, Councillor McCabe. I bet I, I need to make a four minute discussion here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, basically, I mean, we sent a letter saying that uh, based on the investigation from a hydrologist and uh, a whole bunch of people there did with the emergency response uh, out of the CSRD, I mean, I, you couldn't find a watershed thoroughly investigated in Wiseman Creek. And, and so we sent a letter to the uh, BC Timber Sales to say, please don't log in that area. They sent us a letter back saying, we got our experts and uh, that, you know, <coughs> yeah, it, it, it would be better to cut them down than leave them up because of the pine beetle or the birch beetle or whatever uh, infestation and, and, and dig up the soil and all that stuff. So basically, if you peel back the onion, we said, please leave that alone. And they said, no, we're logging there. <laughs> hey, that's right. y'all. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think but, we'll answer that. We're, we're going to meet with them on site. And we're going to also have Derek attend it. Yeah. Because it is a question of their expert versus our expert. So I thought the letter was at least positive and that they're saying, let's be on site and we'll have a discussion. But it's going to be a debate between the experts. It'd be Mateus versus their expert. Yeah. Classic. Classic, yeah. So it's basically a resolution allowing this to happen. So uh, um, I'm going to call a question on the resolution. 
No, I, I agree. I agree with listening to him. So I think so. Yeah. Any more? All right. All in favor? Gary, thank you. All right. Correspondence for Action World Ocean Day. Municipal cover letter for the resolution. What do we got? What are we dealing with here? <coughs> So there is a draft. Jim, you want to comment on this? There is a drafted resolution um, that we can move as presented if council wishes to proclaim World Ocean Day on June 8th, 2022. Go ahead, Councillor Evans. Oh, I, I move. Sorry. You would like to proclaim, you'd like to move that we proclaim June 8th World Ocean Day. Sure. We got a seconder. Yeah, that discussion, I'll second it. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. So we got a motion on the floor. Just remember why to why. Exactly what I started to say. They're gonna ask for one day, then they're gonna ask for 30, then they're gonna ask for the whole year. No boats, no nothing, no going on cruising. <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> No, that's how it starts. It's that's how Y to Y started, and now they're getting to the point where we're not going to be able to use our own backcountry. They're they're influencing everybody, and so the last line being the of acts recognized the third anniversary of World Asian Day for international efforts to protect thirty percent of the ocean by twenty thirty. How about fifty percent? One hundred percent. No, I'm tired, I'm tired. <laughs> and I hate to say this, but I agree with Jeff. <laughs> who is Paul Gregory? What is his affiliation with who? And why would we even consider supporting something we know nothing about? I mean, Paul could be the leader of um, no more sledding in Sycamus backcountry for all we know. So, well, he's part of the Quagga muscle. Uh, or he's the guy going, I wonder how I'm going to bring, bring zebra mussels to Sycamus. Um, I, I don't support this at all. I mean, I, we can celebrate it. We can do our best, but I don't think we need to be part of or supporting a group that we know nothing about. Oh, I agree 100%. I did a little homework and and uh, yeah, they're tied to see her. Wait, well. you agree 100% of, of the letter or? I, of, I, of, I'm opposed to of supporting it. Okay. I mean, they're they're going to they're looking for 30% of the coastline uh, protecting it. And um, I mean, they're just they're just they're environmental. They're environment. They're that's all they are is an environmental group. That's all they are. I mean, I love the environment. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it should be protected for for you know earth muffins. For, for what? <laughs> Councillor Evans, you were zebra uh, muscles. I what that last word was. That was the <laughs> muffins? What kind of muffins? Zebra muscles, I think that's what you're said. supporting this. So, what kind of muffins? I, I'm in favor of, of protecting some of our coastline, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, there is a resolution on the table. I'm going to call the question on it. All those in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. So both uh, Councillor Aries and Councillor Evans were. Sorry, guys. For an Earth Muffin, eh? Okay. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, you give it a shot. All right. Correspondent, Sycamus Minor Ha Ha Softball Support. Recommendation that the district donate $500 to Sycamus Minor Softball to support the Sycamus Ladies Fastball Tournament and further that the Eagle's Nest be provided at no cost to Sycamus Minor Softball from June 3rd to the 5th, 2022. I need a mover. Councillor Malma seconded by Councillor Anderson. <coughs> All right, do we have comments or questions on this? Go ahead, Councillor Malmas. I just, I have one comment. <coughs> I, I realize that our only tenant right now is the Eagles, but that was not what that facility was meant for. And I hate, <coughs> I hate putting a label on something. You know, it's kind of like the word. If you label it, that's what it becomes. Why can't we just call it the Sycamus Nest as opposed to the Eagles Nest? Because it was never intended the Eagles be in there. It was for a hockey academy. 
And hopefully it might be that someday, but we'll get pushback because it's called the eagle's nest. So I'm just saying, we should start thinking about how we label things. It's my only comment. I'm in favor of doing it, but I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor McCabe. Of course, I support this uh, recommendation. So we're lucky we have an advocate that brings sports into our community. Um, as far as Councillor Momo's comment, um, everything in Sycamuse is Eagle Alley, Eagle, Eagle River, Eagle Valley Pharmacy, Eagle Valley Transportation, Eagle Valley, everything. It's, it's, it's go to Remembrance Day and you look at all the people donating at Remembrance Day, the list Eagle Valley, Eagle Valley, and then it has to be the Eagle's Nest. No. <laughs> Go ahead, Commissioner Anderson. I support this as well, and I support leaving it called the Eagles Roost because we are a hockey community, and it was one of the reasons that. Uh, yes. It says Roost, doesn't it? That's his letter. Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. That's yes. His. We do have it in our fees and charges bylaw as the Eagles Nest. <laughs> like that is a name. Okay, the so let's call it the. I'm I'm in favor of leaving it the Eagles. I don't have any problem calling it the Eagles Nest either. Okay, I'm going to call a resolution on the context of this sporting Sycamore minor softball, and especially Sycamore ladies fastball, one of the best programs that this town has ever seen, including the Sycamore Eagles. Anyway, my take, all those in favor, carried unanimously, thank you. All right, uh, correspondence. Uh, the, there's a whole list here of correspondence. Um, we have uh, UBCM Community Excellence Awards, uh, Community Channel Turndown, Ban on Plastic Utensils. Thank you for the Christmas dinner funds and Sigma's resolution UBCM. I just want to comment on the actual Christmas dinner and thanks the seniors for giving us a thank you. I attended it. I actually was carving turkeys at two o'clock in the morning and it was really well attended. There were probably well over a hundred people there. And uh, uh, the one thing that I really appreciated was they had um, the Ukrainian flags on every table. And uh, I got up and made a comment on that. And it was nice that they supported Ukraine and how lucky that they were to be able to come to a community event and have a dinner based on sponsorship. So I do appreciate that letter. Um, anyone else want to talk about any of the other pieces of correspondence? All right, I'm not hearing anything. <coughs> Okay, well, then we'll move on. All right, um, recommendation at the regular council meeting for April 13th, 2022 be adjourned at uh, two minutes after eight o'clock. Councilor Malmas, Councilor Aries, all in favor. Thank you, staff. Thank you, Ms. Gallery. Perry Martin, it's nice to see you.